This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, sliceonbroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show. Just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait, just wait. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Don't give a what you want, take it back. Wait for the perfect time and attack. Hey guys, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show 680 Tuesdays-ish that we've been uh, talking about professionalized wrestling here. I'm uh, Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Sorgatron Media Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And we got it all in studio. None of that guy in upstate New York uh, uh, <laughs> uh, telling us what wrestling's about uh, this week. He'll be back with us next week. Mad Mike is on assignment. But with us, let's go down the line. First of us, first of all, he's still here. Ronnie Starks. We have not chased him away. The newest official Mayhemmer. I Proby. still work here. All right. Probably be, I'll probably be less hard on you. We don't have Mad Mike. Good. Good. In that case, fuck you, Mad Mike. <laughs> oh, no. <Here> it <laughs> Starting hard. Wow. You're a little higher up the food chain now. Also, yeah, yeah. also with <laughs> us I'm fired already. is Cameraman Rob. Hello. He's back. It's been a while. It's been a while, yes. Yeah. I'm try- I was trying to remember what the last time was, probably like early this year or something yeah yeah you've been busy yeah. you've been busy this was special wednesday night edition uh-huh you're you're fresh off of you, you shot angel gate for an ip pay-per-view with us yeah. this weekend somebody's shot. calling me oh my god Why? somebody's calling me it's, yeah, sh- it's everywhere in the studio it really love i can't turn it off it's on no. every device i'm awake but now. yeah shot just... shot angel gate last weekend and did a bunch of northeast wrestling yeah i know that's month. coming out so that was uh, kind of cool we're seeing some shots from that yeah pretty it's, good it's popping up on their their little network there i'm glad you're classing up the joint over there oh yeah I, I tried. <laughs> how many times have you filmed jerry lawler at this point lawler well, i've only done lawler like twice really two or three times or maybe like three times okay but that's pretty that's pretty fun because who he got to he was in a match with Argos and Palace the one night, mm-hmm. and then another night he got to slap around Dylan Bostic, which that that's kind of his his. It's lot always in fun life, to see seems. somebody slap around Dylan Bostic. Yeah. And then I think Friend. he I forget who else he teamed up with Pillman on one of the other shows. Pillman Junior. Yeah, Pillman yep. Junior. So it was pretty fun. Uh, and also with us, our guest of honor tonight, Sam Adonis is joining us, international superstar. I can say that with no wink this time. Internationally infamous, I usually. There's that too. So that, is, that is true too. Happy to be here once again. Thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks for joining us. Out on a uh, Wednesday night on the Mayhem Show. I, I'm glad to, and I say that because I literally have to like find out if you are in the country. Yeah, that's <laughs> I mean, you know what's funny is my parents have that same problem. Yeah, I get texts and say, "Where are you?" you know, and I can literally be at my house, or I could be in Mexico City. Yeah, or yeah, I could be in Japan. Um, again, they're, they're really cool and, you know, they've supported the whole thing, but mm-hmm. that's just kind of how it is now. You know, they know if they need something, there's about a two to three day window that they have to, to message me and set something <laughs> up, you know, Hey, Wednesday at 4 PM, you know, this has to be done. So they have to message you beforehand. So. There was a point where you were messaging me when I was in uh, California this year and I'm just like, why is he messaging me at like this time of day or something? Right. And I, look, I looked at your like Instagram. I was like, oh, he's in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> it's tomorrow. I'm yeah, just yeah. starting to become a. Uh, uh, conscious of where I am time zone wise. Mm-hmm. And this is actually quite an important thing because I mean, you, you know more better than anybody about times and, and, uh, the, the social media patterns. Mm-hmm. So like, for example, last week I had to wake up, set an alarm for five 30 in the morning so I could make sure that a, a post I put out was seen by all the evening commuters getting on the bullet trains in Japan. Wow. So like now, you know, I, I'm, it, it's a good problem to have, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm international enough that, you know, you have to think about these things. But uh, yeah, my, I have wacky hours for wacky times. And then, you know, you'll get a, bu- a podcast or somebody needs an interview. And, you know, can you do 3 a.m. on Wednesday morning? And I'm like, okay, why not? <laughs> so a lot of a lot of random hour alarms being sent these days. See, I have the problem when I'm on the West Coast. That's when I get like I set up my calendar for the next month. And then everything's off by three hours. Yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I absolutely love the West Coast. And I just hate coming back from the West Coast because mm-hmm. a four-hour trip takes eight hours of your day. Oh, yeah. So it's never fun. You know, it's, it's always great while you're there. And then you're like, yep, this day's just gone. So uh, awesome. no, I'm traveling a lot, having fun. But as of right now, for two more weeks, I'll be in Pittsburgh. 
Excellent. Well, I want to talk more about your travels here later in the show, but first, please, let's get all the business out of the way. First of all, thank you, everybody. One, on a special Wednesday night edition, again, uh, as I was talking to you guys, uh, uh, keep an eye out. We might be bouncing around the schedule a little bit as we have some weird scheduling happening in September. But generally, we're here every Tuesday-ish, except for September, uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern Time on Facebook Live, uh, where you guys can join us in the chat, like our friend Alex Cars, who's actually out there on the West Coast right now, Dave Potter, uh, and some other other friends uh, from the Mayhem Nation hanging out. And uh, you can also get to WrestlingMayhemShow.com where you can find links and subscribe to us in podcast and video form or look us up on your favorite platform. Even ask your voice device, Google Home, Amazon Echo, uh, Apple uh, Air HomePod. I keep forgetting the name. I want to say the Air, Air, Air Pods or whatever. Uh, but <laughs> ask it to listen to the Wrestling Mayhem Show. And uh, you can uh, you can you can t- you can listen to Wrestling Mayhem Show with your voice. Um, also, here is up at that email address. Good times. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Rob, you're rusty. I was going to say, I forget. I never... never No, you never got it right to begin with. (laughs) Yeah. He's too too busy sexting. The new guy got it. Yeah. Trying to, trying to, trying to. I was giving you the benefit of the doubt too. He's playing. Like, I put my yeah. phone in my bag. I know I'm not going to touch it for a while. Yeah. And I'm going to, you know, have <laughs> so many people angry at me in an hour and a half. When there you go. Over, there you go. For professionalism, Rob. Yeah, I know. I was just trying to find the chat room. <laughs> <laughs> also, four one two two zero six WMS zero. Tweet us at Mayhem Show and Facebook uh, Wrestling Mayhem Show and the Facebook group for Wrestling Mayhem Show, where you guys can uh, chat with us and we share stuff throughout the week. Um, and if you catch us later on any other outlets on uh, twitch or somewhere else on podcast hit us at mayhem show with the hashtag wms680 uh, uh, to continue the conversation on this show thank you to our patreon supporters at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show i know s- several of you have expressed your interest in raising your patreon level so you have more um more power over ronnie starks <laughs> He's just taking his- can they patreon me because I'm right next to him, and I'm six foot four, two fifty. I think if they so pledge if they, in the chat room, if they pledge to me, I mean, uh, yeah. he's if pretty they, much helpless against saying no. Uh, you're not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so if you pledge in the chat room, I will up my pledge. Died. If you do X to Ronnie, we will uh, pass that on to Sam. <laughs> But uh, thank you, Dory. Within the, the laws of, of, of the state of Pennsylvania. Yeah, remember, we yeah. do have a giant window and cops frequently going by. Mm-hmm. So, and a taco stand watching this whole thing. So you're relatively safe. Mm-hmm. Relatively, unless he drags me in the back room, then I'm not too relatively safe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, but we don't have cameras back there. So, what's the point? Um, thank you to our fa- friends, a uh, fan of the show, $1 level, our friend, Bo Diggity. Woo! Woo! Ed Burke, Ed Bobby F. J. Town, Tina Keys, and Team Hammerfist, and our friends at the Pocky Club, five dollar level, Bradley Ruthers, Doc Remedy, Dave Podner, Kyle Turner, and Daniel Towery. And at the Pizza Club, ten dollar level, at the thirteen dollar level is Ryan Clark. You okay over there? My head's about to explode. You're so like one of those fast talkers. So much oh, that's the only way I can commercial. get through this, or we'll be here twenty minutes before we start talking about wrestling. <laughs> and our friends at the manager twenty dollar level, the Grand Masters of Ronnie Starks, is uh, our friends at Occupy pro wrestling so uh thank you so much everybody support the show and you guys support the show too at patreon.com slash wrestling mayhem show and we do do special um um after darts with that usually we ask a couple questions off the books with our uh, guests the things that we don't want to get out there and we might have extra things for with sam here tonight i'm sure some of the extra special stories he could tell us we'll I'm, find I'm a bit out worried here because you have so many different connections with twitch and every every other little thing going on we are kind i don't of- know where the cameras are I'm like afraid to go to the bathroom in here. I feel like you have somebody sponsoring everybody's toilet break, you know. So I'm kind of. Hey, don't think. Hey, hey, there was mayhem poop house. That was a concept that we were considering at one time. And I've I've been around a lot of people that are into some pretty strange things. So nothing would surprise me what people are willing to pay for. Definitely world traveled. Well, let's get into the news for this week. Uh, The biggest thing this week in in, um, our world of too much wrestling. um, I'm really worried what we're going to do when we have Tuesday nights problems when like there's like i don't know three wrestling shows on wednesday nights now because you're not hitting that end of the wrestling cycle there yeah it's like yeah yeah. we still got wednesday yeah we still got wednesday like when is when is our break thursdays now thursday no wrestling thursdays you know Mm -hmm. i mean except wrestle rex southside pittsburgh oh that's right you have no competition when that happens just because that's what i'm busy on other days of the week thursday's the only night where i can (laughs) it's the only night you're free (laughs) yeah and, and us too, because we're too busy watching all of the wrestling. Exactly. Yes. But anyways, um, 
in that vein, this weekend, holy crap, it's already here. The AEW All Out pay per view is coming up, and apparently, um, some may call it counter programming. That's debatable. WWE UK is happening takeover this weekend. I think it's the second or third one they've done of these. I think it's the. This- yeah, as far as the 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 UK specific ones, right? On top yeah. of that, I mean, I know we have we have like two wrestling shows here in Pittsburgh because it's Saturday and and you know there's just going to be wrestling in Pittsburgh. Oh. And uh, although what's nice though is and like you know we were talking about time differences is like that takeover is gonna, that's going to be in the middle of the day. Isn't so it? technically, it's like three to five. Or yeah, something. it's like three yeah. o'clock. So I can sit down at three o'clock then, and I will because I'm doing like two yeah. gigs that day. <laughs> uh, but but if I was a it's non there. busy sort. I would be sitting down with my with my with my hot pockets at three PM and uh, and uh, watching UK takeover and then at what seven or eight we're going all out. So really, you, that's your wrestling day, mm. wrestling day Saturday. Um, plus, I think like isn't GCW doing a big show or something that day and and you know all these other promotions. So it's it, but this is kind of I think this is are we hitting peak wrestle at this point? I mean. <laughs> I don't know. It'd be nice to actually be able to watch some of those shows. I know, right? But we're not. Yeah, we've got what RWA. On yeah, we got Saturday. RWA. Yeah. A lot of friends are at KSWA that night too. So it's like no matter what's on, it's like mm, we're catching it kind of yeah. after the fact. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my Saturdays are busted for the rest yeah. of the year. <laughs> um, but it, it, it is it is kind of interesting that all that stuff is kind of falling on the same uh, uh, day and everything. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's you know, I think that's just the days that they have for it. I am not caught up on UK yet. And it sounds like I'm. I mean, it, it sounds like there's great stuff happening there, but you can only digest so much of this. Because I, I like it when I pop in. Because yeah. I, I think I mentioned before how it's like I'm not as familiar with like the roster and stuff mm-hmm. to where it's like, oh, it's all new. You know, <laughs> it's all new to me. You know, it's like there's nobody I'm tired of seeing yet, or or anything like that. You know, it's like I, th- I think we might have mentioned on a previous show. That like, oh, okay, if you were watching something like WWE main event, you know, and you see it's like, oh, Roman Reigns and then somebody who is clearly, oh, I know that's a, you know, that's that's a job guy, you know, mm-hmm. that, that he's fighting. It's like there's no no suspense. No. You what know, is like, WWE main event? Is that a TV show now? That, oh. It is still it is still it's, it's syndicated somewhere. Is yeah. Superstar <laughs> still on? Superstars is not. OK, I believe. But main event has job matches. It, it does uh, sort of. It's more like there's a story. Like that's where you see, like, like Tyler Breeze might win a match. Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, and it's it's like there's been this hot Sarah Logan and um, Dana Brooke feud going on down there right now. So yeah, it's so kind of like, under the radar, sort yeah, of. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, oh, okay, this is enjoyable because it's not eating up every segment of but every show. It's still show like those two week. two yeah. matches of like EC3 has been on it, you know, mm-hmm. and we've all been like, well, where the hell is he on TV? Somebody's super freaking talented in the last two months i've actually watched more wrestling than i have in probably five years Mm -hmm. i've managed to watch one match a day Mm -hmm. and everything has been before let's say 1999 so Mm -hmm. so watching wrestling now for me isn't really the same thing uh i don't know i can't get uh watch it i don't know i I look at two uh two what's the word um analytical analytical yeah yeah. exactly I, i you know when certain points of view the fan dies inside you you know and most of the guys on tv i know and are friends with forever you know <laughs> i'd rather work with them and see what they got and you know be in the situation with them but you know i'm uh trying to lose weight and not going to the gym too much to sit down and watch too much wrestling <laughs> so you watch the the pre-99 because they're like there's nobody that i've worked here with i here. think it's sentimental yeah. too yeah i think yeah, it's yeah. like it's good where and, you came and from it's and still it, it's still my idea of what wrestling is supposed to be mm-hmm. instead of how you know before we turned left is when we should have gone right you know mm-hmm. and, yeah. and it's kind of free too of you know it's like oh you know any shows where i'm watching week to week and all that and then like say you watch a pay-per-view and it's like oh that wasn't as satisfying as i thought but like kind of free of the context like i'll just throw something on yeah and go oh this is a lot more enjoyable than i remember because i didn't have like the three months worth of you know stuff go, you know homework yeah, going course, on in yeah. my head yeah i just uh i don't know i think a lot of the wrestlers get to that point you know when you mm-hmm. do it so much you know especially like you said there is so much out there right now you know it's on every minute of every day somewhere um and it almost feels like with dvr and youtube you know there's so much content but i still think very few people watch everything in its entirety <laughs> You know, oh, yes. I think if people watch, you know, if, if there's eight hours of wrestling on Saturday with AEW and with uh, with NXT UK or whatever, I think the average anybody's going to watch is, let's say, cumulatively, you know, maybe one and a half, two hours of wrestling. You know, people will probably stay tuned into the AEW pay-per-view because they're doing really good business. They're hot right now and mm-hmm. it's fresh. People are wanting to see it. 
You know, I think a lot of people, you know, they wait till those t- Twitter critics come out and then they say, oh, I heard that was good. Let's watch that. Mm-hmm. You know, or it might take somebody five to six days to watch a three hour show. It's, it, it, you know, it, there's this like I'm getting wrestling FOMO because, <laughs> you know, I want to watch the NXT stuff or the UK stuff. Uh, I want to check out what Ring of Honor. I can't against, like we know some people there. Right. I want to see what Shane Taylor is doing. Like I see his tweets. It looks like he's ripping it up and I want to see it in action. Right. But it's just impossible. Like you have to make your choices. Um, and, and I think I think the normal wrestling fan, you know, is I'm going to I'm going to watch this NXT on Wednesday. And that's probably going to be the only wrestling it, I watch, you know, or, or whatever the case may be. And, and it the seems, people will make their choices. Yeah. And it seems like more like, OK, like the big thing oh, again, like talking 20 years ago, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, Raw and Nitro at the same time. Which one are you going to watch? And it's like, but now it's like you can theoretically watch everything well, it's, it's <laughs> but it's a, like of the 20 hours of stuff that was on this week which you know what am i going to devote two hours mm-hmm. to it's a bit alarming to me because it's just like any you know media yeah. outlets the uh, you know there's wrestling press that kind of dictates what's happening you know? yeah there's a certain public of, of casual wwe fans that might uh follow bleach report and they'll follow uh wrestling inc and wrestle zone mm-hmm. these dirt sheets if you will or wrestling news sites you know whatever you want to call them they're generally targeted towards the the wrestling public. They sometimes don't realize the influence that they have. Mm-hmm. For example, the other night, uh, two, what was it, yesterday? I saw it on my one of my feeds. It was apparently everything ran smoothly at Raw. Mm-hmm. Well, this is this is news. <laughs> yeah, this is what the wrestling fans like, need to know. The show didn't fall apart. It, yeah. it, everything ran it's like, smoothly. It's, it's not at Raw. like they haven't been doing this a, a this live is, production for twenty five yeah, years. But this is headline news. Yeah. 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 Whereas, like that same article, you know, it, because of the followers and the fan base they have, they could be pushing, you know, a, a, a local product or an mm-hmm. international product, mm-hmm. creating the young new stars, you know, so people can have more, more, uh, more options of what they want to see. But like you said, NXT is probably going to end up, you know, you know, getting the the mass viewership on the Wednesday nights, yeah, because that's going to be the narrative pr- uh, pushed. Mm-hmm. almost through no fault of their own mm-hmm. just because they know WWE mm-hmm. fans click more you know it, it's almost something that it, it's it's being controlled in a certain direction without it being their intent right you know right. and I, I think it's just uh these people there's there's opportunity for so much more to be known and learned but the fail safe is always let's just report some gossip Apparently, right. Becky Lynch broke a nail Tuesday at Raw. Yeah. Oh you no, know? not a nail! Yeah. And and then with with AEW coming up, it's like yeah, it's it's like you haven't heard stories of their back, you know, like no, of no. what's going on back. There's nothing in the league because so, it's it's literally like the Bucks yeah. and the and and Cody in a boardroom, you know, figuring shit out or mm-hmm. texting it or whatever. To, you know, to, to where it's like there isn't any kind, you know, and and if of course you know you don't want to see him fail but but there isn't that 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 bit of oh you know we've heard of hostility backstage or you know it's like because it's it doesn't exist yet to be fair i think a lot of the aew buzz has come from these third-party media sites Mm -hmm. you know because it was such hot news you know with the jericho thing and the young bucks cody and all this stuff you know more people that know nothing about AEW or know nothing about independent wrestling they Mm -hmm. only know wwe There's, you know, what do you think of that new AEW? It's so fresh and it's out there and it's getting into the right eyes Mm -hmm. because they're delivering it so hard. And they've had, they've had two shows. But, but I also (laughs) think that, you know, that should almost be a precedent for them to know that, you know, they have almost a little bit more power than, you know, the rest of the companies do. You know, people want the juicy gossip. I mean, literally it's it's wrestling TMZ, isn't it? Kind of, but they're just reporting nothing. Yeah. You know, they have, they have, there's so much out there that they could be reporting that, you know. So this is, you know, I know, you know, other wrestling podcasts kind of like, you know, report on the word backstage. Like every time I see it here, the word backstage is, I Mm -hmm. say, bullshit news i'm not reading it yeah. right it's like, like it, it, this is this, what <laughs> is this like, narrative this? yeah you know i don't you know most of us have listened to like bruce pritchard's podcast and they're like it's what dave Meltzer reported in 1998 on mm-hmm. something and it's like well where the fuck did he get that <laughs> you know you know well, who who was he talking to it was me vince and this guy in the room nobody would have known even if that did happen right mm-hmm. and and it's just it, it kind of like shows and eric eric bischoff's podcast does the same thing it kind of shows that kind of um, you know, this veil that happens and these guys make up these stories and there's no way to prove it because it's not real news. Mm-hmm. It's fake news about a, you know, you know, 
predetermined sto- sport, you know, where, where's, where's your news with it, right? And then Unless it he- is something like legitimately about an injury or so and so signed a contract over here, you know, I, there's I think, nothing solid. I think, uh, you know, I, I hate to use the, the cliche term, you know, because it probably will rub people the wrong way, but they talk about the term fake news. Yeah. You know, these companies came out in 2000 or 2001 mm-hmm. when the Monday Night Wars were hot mm-hmm. and there actually wasn't access. You couldn't just follow someone's Instagram to see what's happening. You know, you needed to wait and hear this gossip. Well, then these companies have been around for 30 years. You know, and now they're struggling to make a survive, you know, struggling to survive or you get clicks or whatever they need to. They need to report to what you call, yeah. you know, yeah. fake news, allegedly, yeah. which is just stuff that's going to get you to know, make you think you're reading something when you're reading nothing at all. I know that more people will listen to this podcast if we talk about those subjects and I refuse to do it. <laughs> but, <laughs> so. but, but it's funny. It's like you said, it's like, oh, it can't be proven. But then when you get like the people that are like, there were only two people in that room and neither of us do it where it gets disproven yeah. and then people don't want to believe that it's, and you this, know, that it didn't are, happen either. And you these know? are the same so people weird. that I think somebody just, you know, these are the same people that believe in the second ultimate warrior because the first one died and somebody was, I was just, somebody was just asking about, was there a second cane at some point and not like that one? And I was just like, no, no, it's, it's been Glenn Jacob the whole time you know like it's i don't know where you got this from you know it, it, it's it's uh, it's it, it's so weird because you can't prove it because because it's wrestling like there's already that air around it that you I, can't I just, disprove uh, it just drives me nuts as a performer and oh, somebody yeah. that cares so much about it to know that you know there's power being left with people that are coach so careless with their power yeah. you know and there's so many young yeah. guys that deserve opportunity and, and options you know and people could be pushed through these same media source mm-hmm. when you don't have anything better to write than Raw apparently went fine on Monday. <laughs> Everything was smooth. There was no backstage blowouts. The co- catering stayed warm all night, yeah. and they didn't run out of Diet Pepsi. It's like all, all there is to talk about is stuff that has nothing if, to do with the yeah, show. Yeah. That's so important to wrestling fans. Yeah. You can't tell me they wouldn't be interested about you know some young kid from Chicago that's busting his ass mm-hmm. and deserves a break, and say, hey, you mm-hmm. know this guy talks about his inspiration. Let's listen to him. Look at him. Yeah, uh, we wanted to report to you about Raw. You know, normally Mondays we cover what happened at Raw. Apparently, it was pretty boring this we week. So start, let's talk about this. I want to start a kayfabe news just for like the local Indies, say, <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, or something like that. You know, at least it bring more attention to them, right? You know, in the Why long not? run, Why not? yeah, it's a, it's worth a shot. So. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, it, it, you know, in AEW is kind of an interesting thing because I, you know, one thing I kind of realized, like, okay, like I said, they've had what two official shows, right? And everything has been built on these sold out shows. Everything has been built on like they're getting like their red carpet treatments with TNT and everything, but mm-hmm. they were getting these sold out shows before that, and it's more or less been run on their YouTube channels. You know, mm-hmm. like like like, like the, that that base that they've had in there has translated into ten thousand butts in seats, and I think that's that's a that's a metric that I think is is something important to look at. Obviously, NWA kind of doing the same thing. I think they have some regional stuff with like uh, uh, pro wrestling out of Hollywood, Hollywood or something like that. But it's kind of an interesting um, it's an interesting uh, 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 analysis, I think, to look at for promotion in general. Right. I mean, you, you as a performer, I mean, I know I see you on the social media like you were talking about, making sure you're there for the, you know, uh, a bullet train in well, Japan. I, I think, I think something, you know, one thing that I look at in my personal perspective, um, I, I'm a little bit insane. You know, a lot of people <laughs> like that. A lot of people hate that. But I'm, I'm still a firm believer that, uh, you know, not everybody lives in these wrestling bubbles that we live in. Mm-hmm. You know, we have our associations with our friends and our Facebook and our Twitter. And in our life, wrestling seems relevant, but a lot of people in the outside real world don't even know that WCW doesn't still exist. You know, they, yeah. they might remember yeah. Rock, Austin, Goldberg, and Sting is all they know about pro wrestling, you know? And it's one of those things where right now it's social media is, it's such a, you know, pivotal point in history mm-hmm. where YouTube is becoming the same, if not more important than cable. You know, I look at with social media and what I do as far as to sell myself, you know, I, I am using it in a capacity where you don't need to be, you don't need to be reliant on a wrestling contract. You can actually be a true to life independent, you know, and, and I still think it's, you know, th- there's so many guys that get viral on these independents and get their merch money up and become independents based on their social media. Mm-hmm. And there's been a million guys that have done it. 
But what AEW is doing is, is they're kind of breaking down out of the wrestling bubble a little bit more and appealing to a public. We still have yet to see the first ever famous viral wrestler that was unsigned. It still hasn't been done. You know, there's still, how do you know that, let's say, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are familiar with Donnie Baker or uh, uh, Khalil Muscle, these YouTube famous characters that have their, no. you know, they, they're not wrestlers. They're, they're, you know, performers making a ton of money based on YouTube. So mm. like uh, Superhuman, or we just had, uh, who was the guy that was just at Rise? Um, uh, right. Jim, Star- Jim Sterling. Or, or Pittsburgh Dad. You know, yeah, 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 yeah. These guys have such a market and a fan base just through their YouTube accounts mm-hmm. that, you know, even though somebody might be famous in the wrestling bubble, it still hasn't been brought to the attention of, 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 a, of a YouTube like public that. to yeah. its fullest capacity. So, you know, hopefully AEW is doing that right now, you know, and then yeah. to say that another wrestler doesn't come up and make that a thing. That YouTube, the, so so your YouTube kind of analysis, it's so interesting because there are these like super, like, are you aware of like VidCon and, and promotions like that? It's, it's basically VidCon is like a the, the YouTube stars <laughs> conference, you know, okay. like we go to Wizard World to go meet, yeah, yeah, yeah. to go meet, you know. Exactly. I know exactly what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. So it, it's like that for like, you know, Know, David goes as a dad as a signing or something. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah, of course. You know, or Pittsburgh dad. You know, ideally would be at something like that with his fan base. Um, so I mean, there's like you look at that YouTube stardom, and, and like there's this huge division and we don't know. Like versus, you can switch channel and see what's popular on on CBS and that fan base. It's not easy to flip the channel to see. Hey, I we didn't know that there's this giant fan base that's as big as everything else, but they're into apartment wrestling or yeah. something weird like that right yeah, but you I, know i think for a lot of wrestlers it's crippling though because they don't see beyond that wrestling bubble mm-hmm. on youtube you know and there there's that's the market they look for that's the trip people they're trying to expand to yeah and yeah. let's say for instance if you have a video you know, and every video you hit gets two hundred thousand likes you know that's a major difference than you know Chocolate Rain getting 580 billion likes or whatever. So it, it, I don't know if you're the one that told me this before. So it's what can you do that's going to appeal them to more than just wrestling? Fans, exactly. Right. And, and that's me as a performer. I get angry about it. Me as a wrestling enthusiast. I get angry about it. Me mm-hmm. as a historian. I get angry about it because, again, your general John Q public doesn't like wrestling like the people we're associated with. No. So when young wrestlers are going out there trying to do the latest cool thing to go viral in the wrestling world and get their tweets and get put over in this market, that might not be the best thing there for, for their career. Whereas some kid that might not do any, you know, high spots at all cuts the best damn promo since, you know, Randy Savage or Hulk Hogan, mm. that guy might, you know, he could be a laughing stock of the independent wrestling group. But if he were to know to expand his horizons beyond the independent wrestling community, mm-hmm. he could be a bigger damn star than anybody in the indie wrestling community. And it, it, for, it's just for me, it's kind of frustrating because I think like, come on, guys, quit playing by mm-hmm. the rules. Get out of your ass. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? This could be you, everybody could make more it's, money, expand to a larger market. And, you know, wrestling would be even hotter. If you didn't appeal to wrestling fans, mm-hmm. appeal to the masses. And that's like, yeah, that's like you were saying. It's like if that's all you're looking to, oh, I just want to make that group happy. It's like you, there's your ceiling right there, mm-hmm. you know. But you've got to take kind of your personal preferences and stuff out of it too, you, you know. If it is like, oh, how am I going to get the biggest crowd that I'm going to get, mm-hmm. you know? And that, and that's kind of like we're, you know, kind of mentioned like, oh, okay, AEW show is starting up on TNT, and it's. A, different landscape than 20 years ago mm-hmm. when wcw was on so it's like how are you going to appeal and like they to, to that tnt audience that's watching him. everything other than wrestling on tnt and, and this right is now. something like you know there's certain guys out there and i'm not going to mention names because mm-hmm. i have enough heat with enough people <laughs> but there's guys out there that in the wrestling bubble in the wrestling community you know with your 18 to 35 you know friendless nerds or whoever mm-hmm. like wrestling in their world That guy's a tough guy because they saw him booked like that at XYZ Indie Company in Chicago and then XYZ Indie Company over here and there. But when you have, you know, a a general public sitting on a couch on a Wednesday night flipping through the channels and dad just got out of the factory. Mom's, you know, been doing her job all day. The kids are outside wrestling and playing around. You know, these people want to watch professional wrestling and see big bad dudes kick the crap out of each other. You know, I don't know if there's a lot of the guys that are considered the indie darlings that are, you know, that have that same sale and appeal. They still have to be translated to television. Exactly. You know, and and I don't think it's a one thing to watch a Mick Foley be your hardcore God compared to 
whoever. Like, like if you're looking at like a Zack Saber Jr. who doesn't look like a killer, <laughs> you know, it's like he's it's like oh he's a small he can and, he could and, take and you he, apart, but he, he it, might it actually be able like, to rip your throat out of your yeah. neck with his bare hands. But you're just flipping through channels, and it's like who's you, you who's need this? to have to you know appeal to the wrestling fans, you mm-hmm. know, and it's or not not just the wrestling fans, a John Q. Public, and again. I'm not trying to take anyone anything away from what's already there and the way mm-hmm. that it is. That's fine. What's frustrating to me is how people still see that as the way to do it. Mm-hmm. That's what we're going to do. That's how they did it. That's how I should do it. You know, and again, we're, we're in a position now where it's, it's, we're all our own bosses and we have more tools than ever with our social media and our connections, you know, to make the most of it. And, you know, people still, I could preach till I'm blue in the face to, to a <laughs> wrestling student or a class of, you know, Hey, this is what you guys should do. Don't worry so much about that. You know, don't worry about doing these high spots because, you know, if you worry too much about that, you're going to lose this or that. And they, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're right, Sam. You're right. And then a week later, they're back in their bad habits because mm-hmm. that's what it is. That's what you see on your internet. That's what you see. We live this, this internet wrestling community and the, and the wrestling culture and bubble it's almost uh, um, self. It's self sufficient, but it's almost crippling. You kind know, of self defeating. It, it, it's too. not. It's 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 mm-hmm. not growing. It's a glass ceiling mm-hmm. because anybody that you know thinks outside the box is afraid to be chastised or you know afraid to do it wrong. And and I just think it's 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 silly. Ronnie, your thoughts. I was just listening to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> he, he just absorbed it. You know, I, I, I talk way too much. No, it's I'm okay. I actually <laughs> That's why we booked you. While you were talking, like I'm staring at you listening, and it was just like, all right. So, uh, you know, I'm a good promo guy. That's mm-hmm. that's my opinion. I don't know how you guys support. You know, you've probably never seen my work. Never. So it's okay. <laughs> also, I'm, I'm a manager. Okay, where at? Uh, Black Diamond, Flight Society, uh, Rise. Okay. Well, of, I didn't know. I, that I'm a local guy. Sorry about that. I, I haven't done shit for shit. My bad. I feel <laughs> bad now. No, dude, I wish, <laughs> wish someone would have told That's okay. me. I'm trying to make a oh, point of shit on Facebook so people an, can see it. Another no, guy fine. that has heat with me through no fault no, of my dude, own. You're, you're, you're <laughs> fine, man. You're, you're fine. I think it's probably like the first time we've actually talked. So sure. It's, it's fine. Uh, yeah, we do a lot of comedy based promos. So that's our thing. Like we do this, uh, this OSHA gimmick. Where uh, we uh, we believe in following the rules and safety and just dumb shit like that, and uh, everything we do is just comedy based. It's and people like it for sure. some. But that, that could be expanded. You know, again, it doesn't have to be limited to the wrestling role. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, if, if if that's what you do at a small time independent that has a hundred viewers or whatever, you know, if you could figure out a way to tie that into mainstream, you know. Uh, um, viral media, you know, get it out there. Get if something's good, I, I truly believe that there's no. No talent can be held back. You mm-hmm. can't hold back talent, you know. Especially with the tools today. You can try, you can try. But, you know, mm-hmm. again, if, if something's really good and something's, you know, entertaining, it'll break through. You know what I mean? And, and, and you know, again, don't focus on entertaining the, the three guys that, you know, are helping <laughs> film. You know, don't try to make yourself laugh or make a joke that only the smallest little independent wrestling fan is going to know. Mm-hmm. You know, you got you to gotta go big or go home. Absolutely. Well, a lot of platforms. Uh, we try to do what we can to help people get over. And one of the ways is over at IndieWrestling.us. Uh, Ronnie's on there a lot. Uh, IndieWrestling.network. We got a lot of stuff going on over there. Uh, the latest, of course, Rise Wrestling, which uh, Ronnie was part of that too, uh, as well as Stomp Out Cancer and a lot of other great shows over there from uh, the Renegade Wrestling Alliance from the uh, Black Diamond Wrestling, and of course some fun stuff like, uh, hey, sometimes we get some people on that couch to talk about ECW. I know our friend Duke Davis was in the chat room. Let us know that he's here because Sam is a beautiful man. What's up, Duke? <laughs> My man. Let's talk ECW. I love that But stuff. he also does uh, with Sam, uh, Shirley Doe, I'm sorry, uh, does the uh, Hardcore Memories. Uh, the uh, for, oh, entire 10 episode run is on there right now on indie wrestling dot network, as well as our breakfast with champions, as well as our uh, waffles with women talk with some of the great local wrestlers here. Uh, it was some uh, great conversations over food items uh, and so much more. Go check it out. Uh, five, seven day free trial, five ninety nine uh, full shows in the full 1080 HD. You can watch it on your TV. You can watch it wherever um, over at indie wrestling dot network and we got new content over 200 hours of content up there right now and growing 
So I think we'll throw another 50 on before gotcha. the end of this month, to be honest. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff in there. I know a lot of people are checking out other promotions and uh, discovering their next new favorite uh, local indie wrestlers. Uh, and, and some actually we just put also um, some best ofs of Ray Rowe, uh, Eric on the War Raiders. And uh, there's some best ofs with uh, Alliance, the former Logan Chulo on there as well. So go check those out, indie wrestling and dot network. All right. Well, Sam Adonis, you have been, you know, like I said, world travel, but also doing some interesting things here local, including I, I often mentioned, I think I just said on the show uh, last week how Caristico was in the news and like, hey, that guy was across the street doing a wrestling show. And, and, and you're, you're the one that was behind that, uh, of course, that that brainchild. But also you're doing a fun thing. I don't like I said, I don't think we've had you on since we've talked about WrestleRex. You've had two editions of that down at uh, uh, Wrestling in the City in the South Side, which is, those that don't know, like the kind of the, the biggest party point probably of the city, right? Yeah, that would be the best way to explain it. Um, and again, that's, that's probably my fondest memories of growing up in the city. Uh, when I was about 18, I started doing security down that way. And I was working at the Rex Theater. Um, I basically cut my teeth in the city there and you know made a lot of good connections and good people before I went on to travel the world. So uh, basically what it all came down to is uh, I come back from, um, you know, whatever tour I'm at, whatever independent I'm at, wherever I'm going. Whatever side of the country you're on. Whatever side of the world I'm on. <laughs> and uh, generally people are always asking me where or, you know, when's the next show? When's the next show? And uh, I've been able to, you know, really create a decent value for what I'm doing here Pittsburgh wise and, you know, end up selling some tickets and, it seems to me that, you know, a lot of times, unless you're an independent wrestling fan, those that scene's not exactly for you. Mm -hmm. So I've been getting a lot of people that want to come to you know see one of my shows. And, you know, most of the time they have to sit through a couple hours of guys that are local and, you know, they're not really that into it. They can't, you know, drink a beer and get drunk. They, they're usually just kind of there for the There's support. There's not a lot of shows in Pittsburgh where you can drink. Well, that's that's kind of why it all tied yeah. in together. The uh it basically happened just to they come and they have fun and they support me. And then what I'd find is, you know, it was a one and done. It was like, yeah, okay, mm -hmm. cool, man. Yep. Thanks. Yeah. We saw you wrestle. You know, what I want to do with these rec shows is it, it, we've kind of created a, a, an atmosphere. That's something different. It's cool. It's fun. You want to be there. Um, it's a Thursday night. There's a lot of a city crowd to it. It's sponsored by iron city beer. Um, they're doing some of the, the, the uh, advertising for it and, you know, getting us a lot of play in the city. Um, the first one we had Pentagon in Phoenix, as the people are watching right now on this feed. Um, that was another thing. I wanted to get these guys into town because they're buddies of mine. You know, I see them all over the country. I wanted to make sure, you know, I could bring them to Pittsburgh at some point. And everything kind of fell into place. The Rex Theater, I worked there, you know, since I was 18 years old. Pent and Phoenix were available on a Thursday. DJ Z had one of his last matches in the city. And, you know, I think everybody unanimously on that night was kind of in agreement. like, uh oh, what just happened here? This was pretty cool. <laughs> so, uh, you know, everything is just falling into place. And now it's kind of starting to take it on some wheels of its own. Um, one thing, I don't really have any desire to run a professional wrestling company. I don't really like mm -hmm. the whole I need to book angles and all this, uh, you know, the, which is a really fun thing to say for uh, somebody who's done at least three wrestling shows the last year. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's different. I was going to say, it's like it's it's like he he comes home, he gets bored. And it, that's, just, that's exactly what happens. He says, yeah. here we go again. Yeah. At the same time, it's one of those things where like, you know, I kind of I take great pride in being from Pittsburgh and like. I also go out there and I see so many guys that aren't readily seen by a Pittsburgh independent scene. Mm -hmm. You know, I have my friends I want to take care of. I know how to do it. I want to bring a product here that's just cool and fun and different. You know, um, I don't want to. I don't want to open a wrestling school. I don't want to compete with the local wrestling crews. But you know, if it means that you know, for my friends, my family, my people that want to see Sam Adonis, you know, it's a pretty you know uh, um, parallel universe. A pretty pretty accurate. Uh, uh, event if you will for my style of wrestling so i'm able to bring some outside guys in, you know some guys that wouldn't normally get to pittsburgh you know and it's more or less just a, a big party it's it's fun you know these shows they're they're i don't really know when the next one's going to be after october 24th but again it's like uh 
I don't know. It's like an all-star show. It's just, you know, who can we get to come to this one? It'll be fun. I mm-hmm. think it's a lot like the old school ECW vibes. Like, you know, what's, mm-hmm. what's going to happen next time. I don't know what's going to happen next time. I can get a phone call on Wednesday night before and you know, who knows, who mm-hmm. knows going to show up, you know, that's kind of what's neat about it, but we're doing Thursday nights. I have 8 billion connections with everybody in the damn business, you know? So like, you know, there's people that want to get on. There's people that, you know, will be on. But it's just something to fun and something different to play with. And it's also a, an opportunity, you know, to, to let some of the local guys, you know, get in there with guys they normally wouldn't, mm-hmm. you know, get, get them in there and, uh, you know, tangle. The next one has uh, uh, Hijo de L.A. Park, uh, who's, I mean, clearly L.A. Park's on the show, but his son's on it. He'll be wrestling with Facade and Lee Moriarty. Uh, and they're going to be, tang- they're going to be a couple other uh, um, high flyers in the match. But it's one of those things where, you know, Lee's one of these guys with unlimited possibility. Mm-hmm, he can mm-hmm. do so much. Just had a great match with Chase Owens of New Japan. But mm-hmm. all it takes is, you know, being in the right position with the right time. And, mm-hmm. and, and just because my vision's a little bit different, you know, who's to say what he can learn or, you mm-hmm. know, pick up from being in the ring with uh, Laparca's son. Yeah. It could be big, you know. So it's just something fun, different. I, I don't want it to be anything, you know, more than just – a house show every couple of months with some of the best talent on the planet. You know, there's not going to be belts. There's not going to be storylines, bookings. It's going to be, hey, let's go get drunk and watch wrestling. Because even like the first one here across the street was, you know, it was like that Mexican fiesta feel to it. You're bringing that with kind of the bar crowd. You know, you know, if you, if you guys didn't see the visuals, like there are no seats. The people, there are no guardrails. We are when we were doing cameras, like we were with the crowd. You know, beer in so, hand, beer in and, hand. But, you know, one thing, but, and, and, and it's interesting too. Like in, and I don't, you know, it's it's like unique names too yeah it's like you're getting the big names so it's like it's not like oh like you know when you had ultimo dragon you know at the show here it's like it's not that he had three other shows in the area that weekend yeah it was you know it's like he was he was one of the major (laughs) things for me is like you know one of the things that's been lost in in all wrestling Mm -hmm. and indie wrestling especially is you know is sales and sponsorship you know that's what uh, that's what is is all product that's what major league sports are based on you know Mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta have a reason to put a show on so many people are in the reason, you know, that people just say, I want to be a booker. I want to be a promoter. I want to run a wrestling show. I want to have belts. I want to have a school. I want to do this and that. You know, I learned in my travels all over the world that it all comes down to, to making money, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's not worth it to run a show to, to, you know, as a hobby. But when you find a place like, you know, Las Palmas that wanted to do this show, mm-hmm. it was my job to get, a, a, you know. 600 patrons in their establishment to buy their products yes so how are we gonna get them in the door Mm -hmm. let's bring wrestling arena mexico in mexico city has a giant damn corona logo in the center of the ring for Mm -hmm. years Mm -hmm. it's corona needs to sell a lot of beers what's the best way to get them to sell beer let's put wrestling on you know in my opinion in my travels i've learned that you know to be so important and you know, that's what you know, teaming up with Iron City Beer, that's huge for us and them. So I think we're onto a winning formula, at least here in the South Side. I think people don't realize that when they watch your Monday night, your Wednesday night wrestling, whatever, like that's exactly what's happening. And so when we're putting together the local promotions, that's not coming through. Because the math of, of putting butts in seats and, and that was that's what makes the money doesn't work. Like when you when you add it all up, and and right? on the and like you said on the you know the big shows, of course it's you know it's all about ads and sponsorship and you you know and but but it's not as overt because you just figure it's like oh I'm going to see commercials anyway. Well, that's it's, yeah, it's a TV it. show. That's you know, the it's, part of, of wrestling yeah. that nobody sees. That, yeah. you know, even the, though it's right there in your face. The entire <laughs> WWE system yeah. and most you know any yeah, especially WWE, it's TV content. Mm-hmm. They're selling you TV, which has, you know, ad dollar written all over it. Every commercial you see costs that a value. So USA is paying for that now, you know, and they're selling the ad revenue. Mm-hmm. Wrestling fans never took that into consideration at all. They mm-hmm. just see the, you know, oh, the ropes are red. This stage is cool. Let's make it like that. This is the angle that's happening. But at the same time, WWE falls in its own category because it's probably equal parts television as it is pro wrestling. Mm-hmm. And that's another thing that wrestlers don't take into consideration. You're going to hate me for this, but there's <laughs> nothing worse than some independent idiot working towards the hard cam for a DVD that's going to be seen by 40 people. Mm-hmm. Well, the show has 250 that are sitting on their damn hands that aren't making a freaking sound, but you have to make sure that you turn around and face the hard cam because that's what the pros do. It's bullshit. You know what I mean? It's one of those things that it's all adding to the, 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 you know, the, the, 
level of wrestling going down and down and down because it's the blind leading the blind. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows what the hell is going on. I sound so grumpy and bitter right now, don't I? <laughs> you sound like an old grizzled vet to I me. Don't. The thing is, I still love this so much. And I like, you know, when I do find people that I get it and get passionate, I'm so much mm -hmm. you know more involved with it. But again, you know, you guys know as well as I do, there's still so much going on out there that, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think... I represent wrestling. Wrestling's given me the best life and anybody could ever, you know, hope for. Mm -hmm. I want to give back to it. And if if being a little mean and hurting your feelings means it's going to get better and give back to it, you know, maybe. And I'll I've heard this line before, so I'm not going to get into this fight again. So <laughs> yeah, it's just one of those things, you know. I want everybody. to be I'm able also to not the one traveling to Japan, so I don't know how much I have to say. Well, I, I want these guys, you know, to be able to get to Japan. Absolutely, you know, I, I want these. There's young wrestlers that should have the opportunity and have the talent and ability to get mm. to Japan or go to WWE and be 10 times the star I ever will be. Yeah. But, you know, when they're focusing more on, on getting their T-shirts printed and working the hard cam, yeah. when they can't even take a hip toss properly, <laughs> you know. The, the, I was trying the wrong bits. There's a good one. Uh, uh, Wes out there is saying too many indie companies are trying to be WWE. And I think that's and that's a conversation we've had with some. It's like, well, what's going to make you different than you're just, well, what's going to make you not just another indie company in the area, Right. Like what separates you from this? What are, what makes you not another three letter company? You know, because there's there's plenty of those all yeah. across the country, right? And and what makes you stick out? And, and this all goes back to that you know that that bubble that we're in. Mm -hmm. In that bubble, people were are happy to hear about the next three letter wrestling company. Yes. But outside that bubble, nobody knows any of those three letter three letter wrestling companies even exist other mm -hmm. than WWE. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's one of those things you got to pick your battles and decide what you want to get out of it. Um, I, I look along, I'm so, I mean, I don't know how much you and I have talked about this in the past, but I'm, you know, I'd probably, I never considered myself before like this, but now considering, you know, what I'm up against, I'm probably would be considered a bit of a wrestling historian. Mm -hmm. You know, I know so much about the past, where it came from, where it's going, why it's going that way. I look at it, you know, if I'm going to be a brain surgeon, I still need to know the anatomy of the foot, you know, might as well know the anatomy of every other animal as well, you know, cause that's the, what being a doctor is all about. You know, wrestling, you need to know this stuff and, and understand and pay attention where it's coming from. Um, I think I just have a little bit of a different outlook on it because of my experience in travel. Um, I just I think it could be so much better, you know, if people were able to expand their mind and, and kind of just, uh, you know, give back to the wrestling business a little bit more because people follow suit. You know, again, the blind lead the blind. So we uh, speaking of that international kind of look, I mean, you're, you're out, you're seeing how everybody's doing it all over the place. Uh, we've talked before on our, our interview with Indy Mayhem show about your time in Mexico. Um, this, uh, uh, your, your tours, it seems like again, more and more tours in Japan lately. Um, what are you kind of learning from what you're seeing over there? Uh, it's just different. You just have to adapt. Um, one of the things that drives me nuts about wrestling. And I, again, I'm not picking on you. <laughs> I hate the term indie wrestling as it pertains to a style. Mm -hmm. um, people say indie is a style. And, and in my opinion, yes, it is a style, but it's a very bad style. It's very mm -hmm. poorly designed. It's, it's an ignorant style because it should have never gotten this far. Indie style would be a little bit of high flying mixed with a little bit of lucha, a little bit of submission style, a little bit of tech, a little bit of Japanese style. Well, the beauty of pro wrestling is it's cultural. Mm -hmm. It's different wherever you go. Every city, every town has their different styles. There's a reason why in Mexico you wear your masks and you run a million miles an hour. Because in this fast culture where there's a million you know, people trying to sell you a million things, you have to stand out and you have to flash. Japan, they're hard hitting and serious because it's a serious culture. You know, you walked in, in the subways at 7 a.m. and there's 8 billion people with a scowl on their face, you know, and it's cold. That's why, you know, it, it all develops it's it's a bit like globalization you know in theory it works but you're never going to be able to remove you know certain elements of culture from it pro wrestling is exactly the same well even regionally for independence or, or local wrestling like i you know you know when i was talking about when i was in california i saw shows i saw shows around tennessee and it's a different vibe and it works for that of course. crowd there and, and that's why i think wwe is always you know they've succeeded they're the ones that won the war because they were the new york city vibe yeah which is why they had to come out with the most appeal to everybody they had to have the, the everybody's watching tv from la or new york exactly the night show and, and the when, late night whatever when you had the garden 
wrestling, you had higher expectations. So mm -hmm. you said, whereas championship wrestling from Florida, you know, these people didn't make old farmers in, in Jacksonville, Florida, they didn't mind sitting for three hours and watching the guys wrestle on the floor and getting a real, you know, technical style, you know, and, and uh, slow paced because that, that's what the, the, the slow life enjoyed. When you had Joe Blanchard's Southwest Championship Wrestling, you know, out of San Antonio, you had the sheep herders against uh, uh, Bruiser Brody and Scott Casey or whatever, because these guys were legit badass cowboys. Mm -hmm. The people you're trying to sell tickets or sell beer to could kick the crap out of anybody that's working in New York or, you know, they don't care. They, they see Jack Briscoe tying someone up in a knot, you know, Billy Bob with no teeth and a che chewing tobacco in his mouth isn't going to buy it. So you had to change the style. It's like that all over that world today. And that's why, you know, in my opinion, it's great to travel. It's great to learn. It's great to adapt. But I don't think it's, you know, I, I think indie style is crippling. It's not good. It's not, you know, it, it, you kind of lose some of the intangibles of the the, the style when mm -hmm. you bring it to, to one side. Um, and I think that, you know, certain things that work in other areas kind of look stupid in your area you this, know? so i want i just want to boil that down a little bit because i i haven't i haven't been part of the conversation talking about this indie style other than like i feel like ring of like that ring of honor style you know versus this style or like the company style you know um so you're talking about like kind of these 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 indie companies that kind of have this uh, these kind of mass appeal indie companies are you talking about nah, or nah, these like, would be more or less like the the core of the indie bubble the, the, okay. the, the indie companies where you know, every match is 20 minutes long with 800 uh, false finishes and everybody's... So know, Evolve could be kind of yeah, a... Yeah, that okay, would probably okay. be, a, a, you know, a, a, a one in that, uh, the, in the general realm of what I'm going with as far as an indie uh, style 15 goes. 15 false finishes and, you know, that right. kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, for, for, that, for their market, that's fine. But mm -hmm. that's, you know, extreme, you know, a, a counter production towards a, a mass appeal, I think. Yeah. You know, the, your average people are going to see some of that stuff. To me, the Canadian Destroyer is the stupidest thing that's ever happened to professional wrestling. <laughs> and that, to me, just defines indie wrestling. I just watched it come off of the top, uh, second rope two weeks ago on a show. But it's you just, it, it, it's, it's until the first one is actually done in a real fight, mm -hmm. I, you know, unwillingly. <laughs> I'm, it's just, to me, there's no credibility behind it. And if mm -hmm. you believe it and do it, it's stupid. You know, I think things like that, they, they hurt wrestling. Um, but generally, you know, the, the wrestling fans are they're cultural it's mm -hmm. about the people and what i've learned later in life you know later in my career i should say is embrace what you are instead of trying to be like everybody else i am basically a 19 no i i'm definition of american style pro wrestling mm -hmm. i punch and i kick and i do arm bars and leg mm -hmm. locks you know and i'll do suplex basic i would be somebody you'd see on you know, at anywhere from 1980s NWA to 1999 ECW. That's, uh, you posted that picture uh, again from one of those NEW shows with Jerry Lawler from a little bit uh, a few weeks ago, I think. And it was just like, no, that fits. That's perfect. Yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. that's exactly what, you know, I, I'm American pro wrestling and that's my style. I, but but that's what gets me work. Yeah. And that's what's insane. Mm -hmm. How many people ask me, Sam, how do I get booked in Mexico? How do I get booked in Japan? Mm -hmm. Look, here's my videos of me doing Lucha stuff. Here's my video of me doing strong mm -hmm. style. Well, they already have 800 guys better than you doing it like mm -hmm. you do it, mm -hmm. you know? So like, just it, don't be like, oh, well, I can do everything that guy's doing. Well, well we already got that guy doing everything. We don't need. They <laughs> like, they that. like yeah. me being a classic American yeah. style heel. And I come over and I embrace that and I do American things and, and it's, oh, he's American style. But now American mm -hmm. style is being lost. You know, mm -hmm. we were always the forerunners. We were the ones that the rest of the world looked at mm -hmm. for, you know, the, 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 the wrestling style and, you know, every territory was based off American wrestling. Now American wrestling is becoming a hybrid of the Japanese American and, and Mexican. Mm -hmm. And now we're losing our, 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 our identity. And that's why I think just generally there's not like a strong classic style American pro wrestling company out there. It'll be, it'll be interesting to see what happens in evolution as we, uh, you know, those barriers break down between all those. Right. So I well, play more. I want to uh, uh, get into with you. We're having some actually a, a qu couple of questions running in from the chat room, guys. I'm going to hold on to that for just a minute here. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to throw out to our sponsors, our friends, Slice on Broadway, supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. And hey, I know a lot of you guys are from all over the country here, maybe in 
internationally with the appeal with Sam since he's getting the bullet train crowd. Uh, and uh, it's too early for them. It's too early for them. Okay, we'll repost at what five a.m. Is that the, is that the prime time? Five a.m. We'll get you guys. Uh, you're gonna make me change my podcast strategy now. Uh, but hey, maybe maybe if you're in Japan and you find a Broadway Avenue, take a picture of that. Hit up our friends at PGH underscore Slice on the Twitter and tell them you want to slice on your Broadway. They start with one location. They're up to four all around and outside the city right now. Let's help them grow even more. So check them out, sliceonbroadway.com. Our good friends support. The show. We'll be back with a big question after uh, this from Katie. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. Guys, we are back. It is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. We're still back here. Sam Adonis is in the chat room. We got him some water. And I'm pissed off. And he's pissed off. He's pissed off and he's Wrestling. pissing off the entire internet. No, I love everybody and I'm a happy person. Yeah, we got him a hug. Well, we, we offered him a hug. Yeah, it was, yeah. It's, it's the thought that it is yeah, the thought he, that counts. He shut it yeah. down. Man. He shut it down. Ronnie Starks is here, just absorbing information. I am. That's all I'm doing is listening, man. <laughs> <laughs> Rock cameraman Rob is here. Hello. Just uh, just uh, you know, just thinking about how he's going to film that next show. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I haven't been to RWA for a while. Well, they haven't had a show for like two months. No, no, they yeah, they have, they do a long break over the. Just, just, saying, just I was actually your mind should be show. at ease because yeah. everybody on the show will work the hard cam. Yeah. <laughs> even if they shouldn't, even if they don't know how to do a drop toe yeah. hold. Well, the good news is the crowd's the on every cam. side. So the, the, the secret Although, is we put the crowd on the hard cam Although side, those, right? The, like, like I said, yeah. I did those ballpark shows, though, for Northeast, and that was kind of interesting because, um, of course, they're selling to the crowd, and the entire crowd's on that side. Yeah, Meanwhile, yeah. they've got the hard cam you know, on the back, so it's like you're looking at backs, and it's like on one hand, it's like you, you want it to look good, but on the other, it's like, okay, I understand the whole point of having that big of a crowd is to show you well know, here, here's it's, another, it's, it's yeah. an interesting back and forth well yeah, here's another little yeah. way you know i look at it is you know years ago before wrestling was all about tv and whatnot mm-hmm. you know in the 60s the guys the, there was no hard cam there right. was, they worked for the corner give the guys taking pictures on the camera in the corner yeah. mm-hmm. bill after you know th- these guys but they never could drop their guard for a second that's mm-hmm. when you know that's whenever you told your stories that's how you defined who you were mm-hmm. that's why these classic shots from the 70s of guys somebody walking across the ring you know tells a story mm-hmm. you know pictures worth a thousand words mm-hmm. and that's that's to me is what makes a good wrestler you know if now there's guys that do the best moves ever but in between the moves, if you take a picture, it's just a guy looking at the deer in the headlights. Mm-hmm. You know? Hey, we're throwing out the format. We're uh, taking questions for Sam Adonis here. And uh, because he's a wealth of information. This is amazing. And we had one. Let me see if I can pull up from Don out there. Uh, well, he asks, uh, Sam, would you go to WWE NXT? Oh, 100%. They just have to pay me what I need to be paid. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, I've, I've, I've had a contract with WWE in 2011. Mm-hmm. I was uh, an FCW system. Um, the, the I'm pre-cursed. related. I'm actually related to a guy that works there. So uh, I don't know. I'm on pretty what? good terms with him. Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't like to talk. You about don't it. say. But there's uh, no one else there named Adonis. I don't know. Crazy. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely be up for it. But again, it's you know I'm, I'm at a decent point in my career. It's all about you know just uh, going where the money is. Um, the one thing that I run into, uh, I was in. I was talking to somebody a few years ago about a you know contract opportunity. And I was under contract with CMLL, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of times uh, from an independent level, you know, these guys can go do tryouts and stuff, but I've actually been able to, you know, be full time with another company. I can't do tryout. I can't go, yeah, and, you know, yeah. and, and come do TV as an extra, because if my boss hears I'm not being loyal, you know, then bye bye all Japan just for, a, you know, a, an opportunity. So, you know, I'm, I'm sure, you know, there's plenty of other things on the horizon, but right now I'm happy working for all Japan Pro Wrestling. Awesome. Awesome. Um, let's see. We got one. Duke Davis. Uh, he says, would you, uh, what would you advise guys trying to get out of the indie bubble? Um, find some media, some, some, some form of media or find hashtags that have nothing to do with wrestling. You'll see somebody on their uh, social media market and, and, you know, they'll, they'll finish their promo with hashtag indie wrestling, hashtag wrestling, hashtag ring of honor, hashtag NXT, hashtag AEW, hashtag it. And I, uh, you know, there's, there's only 20 hashtags that everybody in the wrestling business uses, mm-hmm. but you know, find some, some hashtag that 
is a different market, you know, and, and use your wrestling promo and, and, you know, get that hashtag involved. You like, know, find like, like, like Ronnie with uh, the, the MT OSHA thing, like he should just be tagging every safety company term <laughs> there is out there. I thought you were talking about MTO from sheets. I got it. <laughs> so that's, 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 that's kind of the mashup. Yeah. Okay. Well, the one guy's name is Dan sandwich. So it kind of came around. Um, but, but I mean, exactly yeah, right. Who? Napoleon. Yeah, very well. Yeah. Yeah. He's not good. Good dude. Um, we had, uh, it may be something to that, but I feel like, I feel like somebody's asking your thoughts on, on characters in the WWE now and, and, and the fiend in particular, I feel like that's somebody that's kind of addressing a whole nother. Are you aware of what Bray Wyatt's been yeah, doing? Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it, it's cool. It, 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 it feels like it's addressing a whole nother audience at that point, right? Uh, I think it's just a breath of fresh air cause it's done well. Mm-hmm. I think it's something that it seems like it has depth. I think a lot of wrestlers don't even realize they have no depth in their character. Mm-hmm. You know, a good wrestler. You, I always say that, you know, you could close your eyes or, or if I said to you, imagine macho man, Randy Savage comparing soup labels at the, at the store. You can imagine it. <laughs> You've never seen it. And they, you'd watch they, it. They, they, exactly. You, but, you'd but definitely watch it. There was so much depth in the character that you can visualize it. If you say, mm-hmm. imagine The Rock, you know, uh, uh, going shoe shopping, you know, you can see it happening. WWE never needed to film it, but there's no. so much depth to that character, you know, you could do it. Now somebody has a character and a character falls short with a picture, you know, hey, this guy wears this on his head. What's his character? Who, you know, who are they as a person? Mm-hmm. You know, I think this fiend and I think, you know, Bray, he was one that was a, you know, a decent friend of mine when I had a contract down there. I'm not going to say he's my best buddy and all that. I don't <laughs> want anyone to you know misinterpret that. But, you know, he always had a good head on his shoulders, a good heart. He was a nice guy and he worked harder than everybody. Mm-hmm. He had his head and he was constantly coming up with new ideas and coming up with new things. And and you could tell that he was a wrestling guy. And, and you know, that's what I like is you could tell that, you know, coming from a family, if, you know, anybody, there's legacy guys that their family's in the WWE and gets them the job or whatever, the smallest percentile even like it let yeah. alone get yeah. it you know and i would say now 90 percent of the wrestlers you know 90 99 of the wrestlers 100 percent of the wrestlers like it you know very one percent of them get it you know and that's that one percent that's actually doing well i think you know in in the legacy wrestling world of wwe with the, the legends kids and stuff yeah that's even harder to find so i think that's why he's found his success with bray wyatt before and now as a fiend so and and like you're talking too about like kind of working outside the fan base too it's like oh i've got friends that are like into horror movies that don't watch wrestling but it's like oh you could show that character and kind of the the mm. weird shit that goes along with it you know like the it's a door the, the kid show stuff to where it's like oh you uh, could get somebody to watch that that wouldn't typically kind watch kind of on wrestling. that line uh from the chat uh jen carlin's is saying absolutely terrifying to his nine-year-old to her nine-year-old live uh, on the other side, Tina uh, up there in Washington says, uh, Junior loves it. He wants to know more about Tom Salvini's work. Because, of course, most of that stuff has been done. I think the initial Funhouse yep. filmings in the in the mass and everything. Yeah, so were it's done got that as far area. as we're concerned. Yeah, that yeah. kind of local flair to it, you yeah. know, or yeah. that the, those those ties. You yeah. Know. So, um, you know, that's T- pretty cool. Tell the kid to watch Little Night of Living Dead. <laughs> franchises. There you, you go. You want to learn something about Tom Savini and, uh, and George A. Uh, Romero? Uh, kid, d- just look at the dust till dawn. If you want to see, uh, oh, what was his name in there? He had the the, the pistol on his crotch. Oh, it was, it was like oh, Sex Machine. Sex or Machine. Like that. Yeah. yeah. In, uh, are we are we allowed to talk to the kid about Sex Machine? Yeah, that's the next thing. <laughs> he might. He, there's a little bit of a, a steep. Uh, between just Night of the Living Dead and From Dust Till Dawn. Well, you know, yeah, it's, okay. It's you start with curve. Night of the Living Dead <laughs> and then move your way up. And then it's like, and then the guy that did all the mask is Sex Machine. Yeah. Boom, here you go. So yeah, that's like, it's, it's all ties into Pittsburgh here, which is great. My roommate actually ran into Bray Wyatt at Planet Fitness in uh, Edgewood while they were filming that stuff. Nice. And he says, hey, uh, you, you're actually friends with uh, Sam and Donna. He says, holy crap, this is my roommate. So it was pretty fun. That's awesome. Weird story to hear from my crazy roommate. <laughs> Love you, Dave. <laughs> Awesome. Um, Mason is okay now, by the way. <laughs> so, geez. Not for now. It's been a long time since we've had somebody <laughs> that was giving kids nightmares, yeah. right? Like, I like like Papa Shango. I, I that, wasn't. It was always kind of sillier nightmares. though, or like when he had the boogeyman or whatever. It was always just kind of yeah, goofy, not so much. Ooh, I'm I, I don't know that you're, you're putting yourself in your perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess so, like, yeah, you weren't you weren't nine when that to happened. Right. To where, yeah, yeah, to where the right age group, I guess, or the right kind of. It's like, oh yeah, it could be scary for kids. I guess you can mm-hmm. see that, and then it's 
yeah, like maybe it's drop drop the boogeyman on level. Saturday night, night Saturday morning slam when they had that. Yeah. You know, yeah. see what happens, see the complaints roll yeah. in. So I guess Live yeah, wire. I can see what you're you're saying where it's like, oh yeah, it might be more Dude, of a hit with the real Ghostbusters scared the crap out of me on Saturday morning. The real like mm-hmm. the legit, animated, the, cartoon. the animated the oh. boogie the boogeyman that was like kind of this Joker looking thing mouth, was the lips. scariest freaking <laughs> thing I've ever <laughs> seen on television, man. And it just like it, it, it that was the episode where like I'm hiding behind this pillow, <laughs> you know. Little let's see, what was I? Probably six or seven year old I was me. Gonna say that was I was yeah. probably I'm yeah. To you're think you're probably about the same. Yeah. So we had Are You Afraid of the Dark in my generation. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good one. Yeah, the was, one that always got me was one episode where a little kid came out of the water. And he's like, I'm cold. I don't remember that man. It's been a while. I've forgotten a lot of crap. I party too much. I don't drink now, which is nuts. I haven't had a sip of alcohol in like nine weeks, and I really? dropped all kinds of weight. I have abs, yeah. so it's weird. Like, uh, I, I, it's not You're like where do these come from. No, it's it's cool <laughs> because like I can't say I don't drink. Like I like drinking. Yeah, but uh, I've had such a you know a, a crazy ride, and I've always wanted to to uh, I never wanted to miss out on experiences because of uh, dieting. You see some wrestlers on tour that you know just eat their chicken, and you're like, dude, we're in goddamn Japan. Let's mm-hmm. go out in Paris tonight. Let's do this. Like, nope, got to be up at 6 a.m. for cardio. Whoops. I never wanted to do that. Well, now at 30 years old, I've accomplished literally literally everything I've wanted to do in my life, mm-hmm. you know? So now I'm like, yeah, let's get abs. This will be cool. But it's so. like, yeah, like you said, it's like, oh, you're getting these new experiences. You're doing these things. It's like, don't be an asshole about it. <laughs> yeah. Enjoy it. You know, yeah. it's like, yeah, just take it in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's like you've got your, you know, yeah, whatever. Okay, you want to eat healthy, work out more and all that. But yeah, like you said, there's no but point like, you being in Japan if you're not going to do something. Well, and the that, thing is, this will yeah. be my fourth <laughs> tour of Japan yeah. uh, going back this time. And uh, like all the fun stuff, I know what I like now. Mm-hmm. I know what I want. I know the places I want to eat again. You know, mm-hmm. I know where my gym is, you know, and now it's to the point where it's like, last time I was there was for, for uh, four and a half weeks. And after about two and a half weeks, it was like, okay, I'm working in Japan. It's mm-hmm. not just a little vacation. You know, after mm-hmm. a while, you get used to it. The novelties wear off. You know, you, you still love it. You still enjoy it and learning You're the culture like, and well, stuff. Well, I'm in Japan now. And the stuff right. that's become part of your routine, it's part of your routine now. Yeah, yeah exactly. But, but, but yeah. For those wondering, uh, Rob is relating to this because he's he's done his, his done world a tours, traveling, a little most... traveling with the uh, – Armed forces, mostly military. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. So, so you don't really. It was your just, job. Well, it is one of those things where it's like you know, if you're in these different places in the world, especially like if you're on the job, you know, it's it's like you, you might not know when you might be able to, you know, even on that tour or whatever. Exactly. You know, when you might get to do this again. Exactly. Know? Yeah. So right, you know, and even the, I look at some of the terrible things I've eaten all over the world. You know, yeah. it's just like <laughs> it's just again, you never know. You know, yeah. I'm lucky enough to have had you know 12 years in the business, but every time we lace up our boots, something terrible terrible can happen mm-hmm. you know i'd like to know that at least you know for the the time i had there i was able to enjoy it and say <laughs> i did it you mm-hmm. know the last thing i want to know is say oh yeah I, I went to japan 13 times but i never had any of the food i just ate my chicken and rice all day yeah you know that's you just trying to find a mcdonald's yeah, that's the or place for it. You know, to like- be fair it's a lot <laughs> easier to diet over there because they actually have vacuum sealed grilled chicken breasts and their 7-Eleven sell like high quality real food that's uh it was so- this sometime in thailand and it was it was Interesting yes. how many 7-Elevens and how stocked they were. Oh, yeah. And they yeah. have fresh food all the time. So it's yeah. good. So it's safe. Yeah. Well, relative, yeah. Better than the street <laughs> meat out there. That's for sure. Yeah. Because I went to, because I, yeah, I, I went down to Mexico City. Well, you know, you were talking about that. I was down there a couple times in like high school. And it's like, oh, I didn't know I'm not supposed to, you know, I'm not conditioned to eat the meat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's sold the on the street there. Same but, thing, dude. I, yeah. you know, I lived there for two years. And, and after, after a certain point of time, you know, there's probably a two month novelty where what's this, what's this, what's this? Yeah. You know, then you develop like, okay, I'm here to work. Mm-hmm. I'm here to do what I need to do. You know, mm-hmm. and then, then you take it seriously. But yeah, it's, it's uh, I've I've had my fun, and now it's to the point where like, uh, I think what it comes down to as well is a lot of people have jobs they don't like. You know, people really they, they have lives they don't care for, and their escape is the weekend where they get to go out and party. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I my job luckily is my escape. You know, when I'm in the ring in front of you know two thousand people and cork and hall or in front of 10,000 mexico city that's the time that i like being you know removed from things if it means that you know i have to sacrifice eating bad or drinking or whatever to perform at a higher level and get more out of that you know that mm-hmm. moment it's completely worth it that's kind of interesting. we've had this conversation on, on on text a little bit about how that you're like hey, i'm crazy I, you know I'm, I'm out there all the time right like there is that certain that certain point because i've had somebody have these conversations with me 
um, where, you know, hey, you're kind of working all the time. You're not really getting much downtime, but you're just like you're on the game all the time. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's it's insane. It's it's fun. Um, I actually took some time off in July. I took a little break because I was so burnt out because mm-hmm. I came home from Japan and I literally had two days to, to rest, you know, and try to get over the jet lag before I was in Detroit. And then May, I swear, I spent 80% of the month in Dallas airport because American Airlines screwed up so much. <laughs> so uh, it just literally five, yeah. five yeah. weeks nonstop. You're trying to get off, you know, and again, these you know, TV guys have it way worse than I do, you yeah. know, yeah. but uh, you know, the, just being that busy and going and going and going. But at the same time, you know, in my case, uh, I'm constantly hustling and working and I understand the value of branding and marketing my self and being selling you know selling it and and that's why even when you don't see me somewhere you know that doesn't mean i'm not working it doesn't Mm -hmm. mean i'm not you know making calls and getting things done for what needs to be done i'm constantly constantly investing in new wrestling gear god i hate it i absolutely hate it because i spend so much money on it however you know i I think that's one thing i can pride myself on is people say that guy's a pro you know he's got the high quality stuff and it all again you should never stop uh you know your brain should never stop working putting into this character and all this stuff so it is really a full-time gig you know being able to to maintain a a, a higher level indie status if you will indie i hate that word (laughs) (laughs) independent can we just say can we just say independent independent um Speaking of gear, I have to ask you about this because I was surprised by some gear that I discovered Uh-oh. at the this, I know where uh, this is going. at the memorial show that the bass man put on a few weeks ago. Uh, the first time that I made a gif and realized I might not want to put this on Twitter because I don't want to get uh, blocked. Uh, <laughs> you got some, you got some nudie boobies on it, your. It, uh, it, yeah. <laughs> this this was just uh, I don't know if it was a rib against me or if it was a good idea and my buddy was just uh, messing around. But I got my I get all my airbrush tights done in Mexico City. Yeah. And uh, I told a guy I wanted flamingos because everybody gets a tiger or a lion or something. I'm like, yeah, flamingos are cool. And, you know, they're badass, hot pink, different, you know. Everybody in the little bubble does plays by the bubble's rules. Yeah, you know, yeah. Sam Adonis wants goddamn flamingos. Why not? So I got them flamingos. And on the other side, I was thinking like Jane, Tarzan and Jane, you know, <laughs> having like a you know, jungle girl. Yeah. So he made them for me. No problem. So I'm walking in the arena, Mexico. And a buddy of mine comes over and says, hey, dude, your, your tights are ripped. And I instantly had that panic. Like, what? These, these were today's tights. Mm-hmm. So I look and I pull it up and the bra is actually stitched on just above her breasts. So you can lift the, the flap of, of uh, leopard print skin or le- leopard print <laughs> material over to expose her nude breasts. So, so it wasn't just painted on. It, yeah, it it's, just, with accessories. it's it's, it's like a airbrush. Book. Exactly. It's like yeah. a pop up book. That's, a, it's, <laughs> yeah. that's the best way to put it. But yeah. it's one of those things that it's so ridiculous that it always gets a decent you pulled reaction. Those, you showed that to the crowd while you were, you were uh, uh, hanging out ringside. I'm just like, oh, that's yeah. new. Yeah, it's, it's fun. It's different. Again, I'm. I'm, you know, I guess controversial or in a good way, but I, I think some people, you know, it's it's a laugh, you know. Yeah, yeah, if no, you want to be offended by that, you know, it's I, not something you're taking to the TV tape. <laughs> yeah, I've actually had to pin them down at a TV tape. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had a show in Los Angeles, and they were my newest tights, and I had one match in front of about six thousand people at a, at the uh, Gallon Center in L.A., and uh, yeah, I had to make sure I got two bobby pins, and I. I, I pinned it down because it wasn't mm-hmm. they were the nicest newest stuff and I didn't order them like that I didn't want them like that but I had to deal with them so you had to you know make do but you figure that's something you wouldn't have to like mention you, you yeah. know like like hey you, you, you know that's like you, it's you, you, brother the world let them be tight you know. you've been there you know the rules that we know <laughs> do not apply in Mexico City mm-hmm. they play by their own set of rules and I I've, I've had a blast down there I love every second of it I love the people there but just always expect the unexpected uh, we have some more comments rolling into the chat room here uh, everybody's telling us who they're who they were terrified with when they were young. Um, Tina, uh, out there in Washington, uh, state says she was terrified of the road warriors as a kid. Uh, four year old Tina was terrified of road warriors smashing pumpkins from a scaffold. What was that? Oh, it was the, was like, like the Skywalker match or oh. whatever. Where they, you know, cause, is that because like Halloween Havoc or something? The from that. Cause, cause they were like the start, like the early starcades. Yeah. I think each might like the first couple had one where it's like, they basically get up on a scaffold. And everybody's yeah. Just yeah. Scared yeah the to Scar- death Star Wars even. match. Just, it might've been a Halloween Havoc though or something. Yeah. Cause if there's pumpkins, I don't remember that. Well, I think what they were just trying to sell was that it's like, okay, let's look. You know, if something were to fall off of this. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah you know. They were like, this is Jim Cornette's head. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah, remember yeah, that yeah, no, no. particularly. 
But but then of course nobody ever got like hurled off of the thing or anything. No, no. Like I think Cornette got the Cornette worst. Cornette blew one his knees out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His knees out. Yeah. yeah. I watched that match like after it came on network. That is that was but, kind of. It's a, such a weird match too, because yeah. I think like like a couple of the guys were like legitimately afraid of heights. Oh too, yeah, mm-hmm. you know. So, but but and and I just thought of one too. Like okay, like we're thinking of more of the horror characters. Oh, like you know, Boogeyman and all that. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I want to say Vader, his whole get up when was, he had the mask was pretty, was pretty scary. He was just awesome. Like the first times you see Vader, him. there will never be another one, yeah. and I wish to God there was. But that man was special. But like before you saw the person underneath it, you know, mm-hmm. like when you see like the, ah, yeah, the, yeah, the promos yeah. or yeah, whatever. Yeah, I know the entrance mask. It's like, what the hell is this thing? He's yeah. one yeah. guy that I can constantly put on a tape and be like, just yeah. wow. He I just ridiculous. love him. It's just unbelievable. Everything yeah. he's ever done was just amazing. And, you know, we were blessed to have him. Insane, insane for his size. Uh, Don saying uh, The Undertaker, of course. Um, man, it, the, the, even like the, the late nineties, like ministry, like Undertaker. he was pretty creepy there. Yeah. That yeah. whole angle with yeah, Austin like, crucified was, and all that stuff. It like, was it, pretty it, it, dark. It, it, like creepy. And you're just like, what am I watching? And should I be, yeah, <laughs> you know, a little yeah. bit, right? Yeah. That was good stuff. <laughs> Mankind when he first came out was pretty scary. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like man, the boiler room promos, 96 and stuff. Mm-hmm. That was kind of like, Oh crap. I remember the last time I was like. I guess uh, pro- probably the only time like, I can remember was when Crush beat up a fan. When Crush beat up Steve Carino, who was a fan in the front row, yeah. and he pulled him over the guardrail yeah. and beat him up. I remember like just no, this is, is that, a, that was, can we go to wrestling still, Mom? Like that this was is, like Mister Fuji era Crush, right? Like when he had a little bit of yeah, the face paint. Yeah, and stuff? yeah, he had yeah. the dragon tattoo on his face. Prison yeah. Crush. Prison right, Crush. Right oh, Prison came, Crush. Right when he came back and beat the crap out of that fan, I was like, no, 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 no. Oh. I don't know if I want to like wrestling anymore. Yeah, it's a bit heavy. but it did seem like the late the the mid '90s seemed more rock concert at the WWE shows. Like when you go back and watch those Raws, you're mm-hmm. just like, yeah, I don't know if like you couldn't just sit and watch a wrestling show. You were part of like an experience at that. Yeah, point. Yeah, well, I love it. One thing that drives me nuts is I do I love it. WCW have missed so much mm-hmm. watching those crowds now. It's just mm-hmm. it's there's crowd energy that just doesn't exist, <laughs> and these people are just insane. You know, they say we're live from Daytona Beach or we're live from oh, yeah. you know, wherever so they're the coming different. from. Yeah. They were nuts. The people were so entertained and excited, you know, because it was, it, it was, again, it was for more people. It wasn't for a segregated, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of those people enjoyed Rey Mysterio and, and Eddie, mm-hmm. Eddie Guerrero matches, you know, but they came to see Hogan and Piper and Nash and everybody. Somehow we've decided, you know, wrestling folklore and this bubble has decided to rewrite history that certain guys were terrible workers you know, it's bullshit. These guys mm-hmm. are, you know, what the workers, they might be terrible workers and your work rate idea of what you think work rate is, but, you know, asks your, you know, the, the guy at the pizza shop, what does he remember? And, you know, the guy that sold the most tickets is the best goddamn wrestler. It's funny because I have a conversation with the po- guy at the pizza shop when I pick up our slice on Broadway every week. And, <laughs> and he would probably tell you every time that yeah. Kevin Nash is a much better wrestler than Chavo Guerrero. Maybe so. Maybe um, yeah. I don't know. I like Chavo. Sorry, because very, very few of the you know, like they talk about how like yeah, you you had the luchadors and Japanese guys and stuff mm-hmm. where it's like you know they talk about oh yeah, like you know they'd open the show with those fast paced matches and stuff, but then throughout the rest of the show they just had nothing for them to do. You know no, they no. weren't involved in angles. They weren't involved in you they know, had their you know, own little ones like here that. and there, but that was it. That but, that yeah, when you're talking about it, you, you know like oh, did you see what happened on Raw last night? You're talking about this, yeah. the storyline stuff. Or, right, these you know, guys, you know, they they're great to carry a show. They're you know mm-hmm. instrumental in in the show, but they weren't you know they, they didn't bring the the people to the show. You know they they didn't sell the the houses out. You know, they were just kind of filler, but they you know they, they were necessary. I'm not saying they weren't necessary, mm-hmm. but you know you you main event wrestling is its own thing. You can't have one without the other, and it all comes down to mass appeal. It comes down to you know larger than life. You know, there's people that will remember Hogan and Warrior forever. You know, meanwhile, there mm-hmm. could be, you know, any uh, any amount of better worked matches, you know, mm-hmm. that that's a good match with good work rate. That just is another one of the you know, vaults on the network. It's kind of a, a, a crowd work rate at a certain point. right? Yeah. 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 And again, uh, and, and it's like most wrestling fans have no idea what the hell they're even talking about. They, mm-hmm. they buy on and what they think they're supposed to like, you know, they follow yeah. suit and, you know, oh, I heard this guy's good and this guy's good. That match was great and had great work rate. Okay, buddy. Yep. Five stars. Five stars. Five stars. Exactly. <laughs> you ever have a five star match? Never. I never will. <laughs> I don't think Melcher likes me too much. Oh, of course. Um, let's see. I think there was another question rolling in here. Um, I know one guy was asking. 
Why are you wearing pink, Sam? Why are you wearing Why are you wearing pink? Howling mask. My Look official at that. clothing sponsor in Tokyo, Japan. Go to their official. You ever Instagrams. been to uh, Lucha Taco in uh, San Diego? No, but it sounds nice. It's uh, that was one of my, one of my discoveries when I visited no, San Diego. No, a few years went ago. There. I, I don't think I've ever wrestled in San Diego. I've wrestled in L.A. a ton, but uh, I, don't I think, think they yeah. may have expanded. They might have. It, 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 it's nice. There's a, there's a lot of old Lucha stuff on the walls, and they have like the Is that the one with the big circle. tall balls up on the ceiling? So like custom painted. They're like these big, like three foot tall. There's like every luchador. There's there's statues. One it might be maybe one of the they had multiple locations. I saw one of them. I'm, I follow a lot of these people on Instagram. Like if it's interesting and I I'm like you know I don't really pay attention. It's not like oh I want to go to this taco stand. But if there's mm-hmm. cool stuff there, yeah, I'll follow anybody. You know. Yeah. By the way, if you want to see the boobies, um, go uh, check out the uh, memorial show section over on indywrestling.us. I was just asked to plug it. That's right. <laughs> so on the chat room. So I'm going to I'm going to do a solid now, over there. Now, how much does it take like you, you said when you're you know getting different gear done and stuff? Um I'm trying to think. Oh, like when you did like say the the Trump stuff. You know, it's like how as as far as getting you know investing in that kind of gear do do you take into consideration as far as like oh okay i'm going to do this for the long no 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 i've know. spent way too much money on gear cuz okay. i get new <laughs> ideas i want new stuff and then i get rid of it so it might just be a couple times it's not like oh this is going to last me I and you're not new, like yeah. and you're not like ebaying off the old gear no, like the girls no, do no 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 <laughs> i usually just throw them you away you probably can with the booby one, one. Yeah. probably but i uh i sell a lot of them in japan now um but I get new ideas, and then like literally, I had a drawer of like eleven pairs that my ex girlfriend probably still has because I left it, left everything at her house. But uh, there were just ones that you just get tired of wearing, and then mm-hmm. sometimes it'd be like a show at a bull ring, and you don't want to wear your good stuff for there. Mm-hmm. But the worst part about the uh, the uh, airbrush stuff is it doesn't last very long. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to. You I get maybe if I'm lucky, twelve matches out of it. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm always staying up, getting new stuff, and making sure it's it's you know topical the airbrush so. there's not as much airbrush these days you're keeping it alive that's well, because it's expensive in the u.s yeah. <laughs> so I so so with something like that you said it has kind of a limited lifespan kind of yeah. built into it yeah anyway, well that's something so. that you know it's <laughs> yeah. it's uh i had the connections down there and it was cheaper for me mm-hmm. and i was able to get it done but yeah there's not really uh but and again something i look at the circumstances a lot of times i would have my opponents on my tights mm-hmm. like you know and it's like Again, the Rick Rude thing. Exactly. It's, yeah. it's short term. It's funny because a couple of years ago uh, that Brian Cage from TNA got all pissed off at me because I allegedly stole his gimmick for doing this Trump thing. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, no, I didn't. I stole Rick Rude's gimmick. I wear his tights, yeah. you know. I do that stuff. I I, uh, I, I wear the, the airbrush tights and all that stuff. Yeah. And just because I was doing it, I was representing the Americans in a tournament, I put Trump's face on it, you know? Yeah. I, I didn't. So and, wait, and, wait, wait. What, was, what did Cage think you were ripping off again? I, I don't think it's, I think it's all kind of calmed down now, but it's, somebody got in his head saying that I stole his gimmick and I'm, you know, I'm like, hey, I don't know. I look like shit. I don't, I'm fat. You know? <laughs> but, and that kind of goes along with what you were saying, too, about getting seen by different people. You know, it's like you could have like, oh, say you're doing, I mean, even if it was like identical gimmicks. So you're doing it here. This guy's doing it here. But you've got the eyes on you. Sure. You, you know, yeah, so exactly. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it becomes, but, but, you could be an asshole and be right. like, oh, I made it up. But And it's one of those not, things where, you know, you know, to me, like I said, it, yeah. If anybody, I ripped off the Iron Sheik, you know, mm-hmm. for being yeah. an American, for a foreign heel, you know, yeah. you could yeah. go into that argument forever. Mm-hmm. Or I could say, you know, this guy stole the, he has muscles. He ripped off Road Warrior yeah. Hawk. Damn you, you know? for being so in shape. Yeah. I think it was more people <laughs> f- fueling a fire that wasn't there than anything, yeah. but it was like a thing. As long it, as you're not Tennessee Doink. Yeah, I, I love Tennessee <laughs> Doink. Oh, I actually do. Let me take this back. The I watched a lot of bad wrestling. Mm-hmm. And let me just put this out there. Any wrestlers that are out there that are locally, Pittsburgh-wise, I've seen more of your bad stuff than your good stuff. <laughs> I am entertained by that stuff. I like watching bad, shindy wrestling. And uh, if I'm not watching something that's going to make me happy, I don't watch modern wrestling like you know a PWG or something because – that's not what I like. Yeah, yeah. But if I want to see something new, I'd rather watch guys that accidentally kill the business instead of doing it on <laughs> plus purpose. It's, plus, it's that bad stuff that pops up everywhere where it's like, oh, you got to see this. Oh, you, you, know, you got to see this guy yeah. eat eat the corner well, when he's trying and, to do and a Not, only, not only that, not even yeah. the viral stuff because I'm still oh, okay. so f- so I'm still tied in with a lot of the Pittsburgh crew yeah. on social media. Yeah. And like, Anybody that puts a match up, just know there's a good chance I saw it. Yeah. You know, uh, just and, and it's not necessarily that it's it's a 
it's that I'm interested in the match. It's that I'm interested in the person. It's mm-hmm. my friend or somebody mm-hmm. or somebody, you know, somebody that I've heard of through somebody else or whatever. And yeah, it's there. And I'm entertained by it. So it'll be on my uh, my my TV at the house and I will be laughing all the way. And I'm sure there's something behind this because I think there's something to this uh, from him. Uh, Wes just says Night Train. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the Night Train was, was actually the Beast Man's first gimmick. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I actually saw Beast Man. This was at Michael Paris, aka DJ Z, aka Hulkin Wild's first ever wrestling appearance. <laughs> what did you say that? Hulkin Wild. Hulkin? I think it's Walking. I think it's Walking Wild. Walking wild. No, yeah. I, I lived in Mexico. The J is a H. Huh. So. <laughs> or is it Joaquin? Joaquin. And he spent time in Mexico. You should know better. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Either way, he was my lucha buddy growing up. With by the way, that's was kind of funny. Mm-hmm. You never think Sam Adonis and DJ Z were. You know, kindred spirits, l- lucha friends, exactly. Mm-hmm. But we did a show where where West Fetty, the Night Train, debuted and was uh, he's so embarrassed about it. And you know, I think everybody's embarrassed of their first match. But mm-hmm. he was he's turned out to be a great guy, great wrestler. Beast Man will be live in action on October twenty fourth at the Rex in the South Side. Yep, and uh, I'm happy to have him part of all these shows. He's uh, and and he has terrorized the South Side in the past, and <laughs> he actually went viral. Yeah, the one video he had, I think, it had like twenty eight thousand views been going or something. Crazy. He was running around with a bone and uh, the stopping he went in, traffic. He like terrorized the Starbucks or something, didn't he? Yeah, he terrorized the Starbucks. He walked into one bar. Uh, the, the Mike and Tony's were not having it. And this was like late <laughs> February too, and he was going around and that's, like that. And, so that's, and like I said. <laughs> You know, a guy like him, he's thinking outside the box. Mm-hmm. That's more likely to get any attention than any, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, most guys his size are going to say, how do I get attention? I should be a big guy that does a moonsault, mm-hmm. you know, and in that wrestling bubble, he'll become, he'll go to every local little Indian, be the coolest indie you know, big guy that does a moonsault. But if something like West, the beast man, you know, can take on a life of its own on the internet, you know, and he could end up not even wrestling, just being beast man in, you know, grocery stores. And he, getting... so he was kind of the thing, like when you did the show across the street here, like the, the picture of him with the kid was like the biggest thing I saw, like, like the news, news stuff picked that up afterwards and everything. Yeah. Like it was, it was, it was unique. And, and with that too, that, that was, that was really interesting because again, it's like, okay, you've obviously, you know, across the street, that crowd was not familiar with a lot of the, no, yeah, you know, with the wrestlers. So he was doing, well, except that. for the shocker. They were but, very familiar well, with the yeah. shocker. But but I mean, it's like outside of like the big names. It's like they don't know who our local guys are because they don't go to shows, whatever. But but yeah, like Beastman was doing that during the sh- before the show, during the show, intermission, going around interacting, you know, and then yeah, and then by the time he had a match or yeah, did yeah. something, it was like oh, that okay, was we, by design. By yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. That was but, genius. Yeah, but your expression for the shocker for those yeah. for anybody listening that was there. I, I'm assuming you're talking about shocker's fantastic language. Language of speaking English on the on the microphone. Oh yeah, it was yeah. the it was the. Remember, it's a family Holy show cow. until it's not. Yeah, well, it was, yeah. it's also like I, I I love going to a show. I when I went, I saw a Lucha Underground taping. It's like everybody knows a chance. I know I know how to say chicken and thank you in Mexican. Yeah, you know and that's yeah. it. You know, and, and and I'm hearing like an entire crowd of 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 a few hundred people. Like, know mm-hmm. the chant to go along with Sh- Shocker and these other guys. You know, you're doing the announcements in Spanish. You know, I, like, I love that. You yeah. know, I'm just like, you know. It, it breaks my heart that we don't have a, a bigger Mexican population in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Because uh, I still do a lot of events for Mexican populations. Like, New York City, I'm always going to. Oh, yeah. And, and it's fun because, like, literally in Pittsburgh, I'm just some guy. Nobody here knows me from Adam. Yeah. But in the Mexican wrestling world, in that population, now, holy crap, there's Sam Adonis. Yeah. You know, here in Pittsburgh, we did that show. Yeah. And it, they, I, you know, when we set it all up, they're like, yeah, of course, come on, let's do this. We had like legit Mexican wrestling here. Yeah. And, you know, and it was great for, for what it was. I think there'll probably eventually be another one, but it's just that the population is not sustainable enough to make it a thing. You know, mm-hmm. these mm-hmm. guys are legit rock stars in Mexico making mm-hmm. big money, you know, and for me to say, hey, Saturday night, I want you. They say, okay, yeah, I'll do your show, but I need this money. It's not going to be, oh, dude, we're just a small little indie company. We can't mm-hmm. do that. I got to mm-hmm. buy your flight, your hotel. It's not like that. It's, well, that's what I get here, you know, three feet from my house. Mm-hmm. And I'm, you know, that's what I get for yeah, TV. Yeah, that's why appearance. we don't see Ultimo Dragon on a lot of the yeah. indies, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, <laughs> so, um, no, it, it's great. It, it was, it was cool to see that, 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 like, a little like a little mexico like just dropped in the middle of, of, of pittsburgh it, it, it's it was cool to me because uh you know having my dad there uh my dad's actually become really good friends with ultimo dragon too which is funny enough That's like so yeah it's 
It's weird. It's like, but damn like, it, Dad, you're working in on my uh, getting in on my work friends. Yeah, <laughs> well, no, it's cool though because I, I don't know. I don't know if I explained this to you last time, but Ultimate Dragon was legit my favorite wrestler when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in '96, '97, my favorite wrestler was Ultimo Dragon, and to the point where in 2004, I met him at an indie show, got a picture and a mask signed, and for a good five years, that was like my holy grail of my wrestling collection. And now I'm in this dude's house chilling with him. And like, you know, he brings me, he's brought me over to two tours of Japan to work against me. That's right. You know what I mean? So like, you know, the, to have him in Pittsburgh with me, you know, my dad and it was like, it was a lot of stress. I don't, I, I don't know if you remember that. I'm, I'm always stressed when I help promote a show. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I've seen you. I'm never doing this again. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well it was funny because at the, the Iron City Homecoming show, you know, you were saying something about being less stressed. I'm like, oh, it's like, does that have anything to do with like not having to run the show? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, it's, yeah. A, it's a definite thing. You know, yeah. and again, my biggest, you know, again, let's go back to Grumpy Sam for a minute. Yeah. It's not easy. <laughs> You yeah. know, wrestling, wrestling promoting is not easy. It's not just like, hey, I think I know how. I've watched enough shoot interviews. You know, there's so much that goes into it. Mm -hmm. So I do get stressed when I help put these events on, you know. But uh, they, th those shows over there, that was special. I think, you know, I'd like to be able to do it again. But at the same time, you know, it all rolls into just being able to bring my vision of, of wrestling to Pittsburgh. You know, I, I'm on a decent mm -hmm. international level. Uh, I'm really going to work hard to, to get some of the all Japan guys coming our way. That'd be cool. uh, that's going to be quite difficult, but so I, I think it'd be neat. I actually did want to ask you about, because, you know, uh, on this show, we're, you know, New Japan's obviously making some international noise. We just talked Monday night with someone with uh, uh, Tina in the chat uh, was on with us talking about uh, New Japan up there in, in the Washington area and got a review from L.A. Um, so a lot of fans out there may not be as familiar with all Japan. Um, you know, what is the difference, you know, kind of what is that says, are, are we, is that something that we are able to watch somehow, uh, as Americans here on the, thank you. The there Internet? is, <laughs> there is uh, all Japan TV, which is basically like new Japan world. Yeah. Um, basically let's give a little history lesson here. All Japan pro wrestling was owned by giant Baba. Yeah. And New Japan Pro Wrestling was owned by Antonio Inoki. Yeah. That would be the equivalent of the 80s WWF versus WCW. Mm -hmm. So um, basically, I'd say 70% of American wrestlers that worked in Japan, and they're talking about the good old days, the 80s, they worked for All Japan Pro Wrestling. They worked for Ric Flair, uh, Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, Kerry Von Erich, Harley Race, Bruiser Brody, Abdul Butcher. All Japan is such a big deal, you know, historically mm -hmm. um, to this day, um, uh, even past that, past the uh, the the Americans of the 80s, they became famous for, uh, you know, Misawa and Kobashi and, and Kawada, like the 90s tape purist pro wrestling's pro, re pro wrestlers, pro wrestling. So uh, they had they, they were massive. New Japan was always massive, mm -hmm. but they were kind of in different paths. Mm -hmm. New Japan was always more like the progressive, the rock show, the lights. All Japan was, we're not going to compete with that. We're going to be better at wrestling. That was always generally the, the, mm -hmm. the you know, perception. Uh, they tried, like in, in 1990, um, I think it was 90, maybe 91, they started using lights. The, cam the TV company wanted lights on the, the TV broadcast. And I said, nope, <laughs> get rid of those lights right now. Wow. And this eventually led to, uh, again, I don't know if you're Japanese fans, but to, if anybody is, and this just shows how big of a nerd I am, but that was one of the big issues between Misawa and uh, Baba's uh, widow in the year 2000. She, he wanted to upgrade and say, hey, wrestling's moved beyond this. The Americans are doing the lights camera. New Japan's doing all this. And it was, nope. This is all Japan. We do this classic style. It'd be kind of like um, um, if WCW was still the dark arenas and didn't do that upgrade. Yeah, for yeah, the, exactly. Our nitros. It, and, it was and the classic, and, and you know it, the classic style. You know, it, American pro wrestling, if you will, in Japan. Mm -hmm. um, you know, years have gone by. New Japan's a clear number one right now. They're so big. Uh, again, it comes down to sponsors and you know profit and whatnot. You know mm -hmm. they're playing with different money. Um, All Japan's very strong now. It's been getting better. Uh, they, they've been drawn through the ringer. You know years past, but now it's kind of you know it's healthy. It's getting good again. Um, I'm, I'm super proud to work there because I can literally watch a, a, a match that I watched as a kid. Let's say uh, you know Abdullah the Butcher against Terry Funk or something. And it's that's the same company I'm working for, you know. Mm -hmm. Again, maybe it's super nerdy, but a lot of people watch this WWE stuff, you know, and that's how they see that. Yeah. To me, there's almost a different allure about it because it's, you know, it's it's it was less easy to obtain. 
Mm-hmm. So seeing all Japan there, you know, it, it's cool to be there. There's a legacy, there's a history. And I think, you know, a lot of people agree that, you know, Japan has always used some of the cream of the crop. You know, I, I, I had opportunities to go to, to Japan multiple times throughout my career, but I've never got, uh, I never wanted to go and stay at a dojo. I never wanted to go and pay my own flight. You know, I, I've been brought to Japan like the Americans were brought in the eighties, you know, and yeah. that's something I pride myself on. So, you know, it's, I, I wave the flag proudly, you know, I'm, I'm proud mm-hmm. to work for all Japan. Uh, I wish people knew more about it. I wish people, you know, again, uh, the internet tells you one thing and Japan is new Japan and this and that, you know, there's a million other wrestling companies over there, over there mm-hmm. you know, and, 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 and people can just, you know, they can find it if they look for it and it's good, but now it's kind of perfect for me because I'm, I, my philosophy and my idealism kind of fits in perfectly there. You know, hey, mm-hmm. it could be done a lot better. It's got to be strict and tight. Yeah. Don't worry about all the BS. Yeah. Do it right. Yeah. And that's kind of why I think I've, you know, I've found a decent little home there for now. That's and awesome. As far as like name recognition, like you were saying, it's like, oh, you know, if, you know, like say average American audience, they think Japan, it's New Japan or whatever. I think that too, like, just think I remember like growing up when, when I was getting into wrestling, you know, like late 80s, early 90s. Like W, like New Japan was the one that had the WCW sure, connections. Sure. So New there Japan, was a lot of that. You know, and the best analogy you could look head. at would be New Japan or yeah. uh, WWF and WCW because mm-hmm, WWF mm-hmm. was the action figures, the toys, the Hulk Hogan. Mm-hmm. You know, but it doesn't mean that the NWA wasn't mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And especially like uh, in Japan right now, that's another thing that most wrestlers and wrestling fans don't see. You know, mm-hmm. they they have their warped perception of of Japanese wrestling based on what they know and like of American wrestling. Mm-hmm. So just because, you know, let's say, for instance, there could be somebody even in New Japan that the American wrestling fan seems, oh, my God, why do they even book this guy? Oh, God, he sucks. They should use this indie guy. This mm-hmm. guy's so much better. Why don't you push this guy? Meanwhile, that guy is the most over guy in Japan mm-hmm. because there's different cultures. There's mm-hmm. different things going on, Be you know. And again, wrestling isn't, it doesn't necessarily need to be as universal as people try to make it be. You know, it, it's sometimes cultural boundaries are healthy for anything. So, um, all Japan is, I have, let's put it this way. In when I first got there for my first tour, we went to Gold's Gym and I told her that I worked for All Japan Pro Wrestling. Mm-hmm. She went behind the counter and opened up this little, uh, like a, a little filing cabinet thing, like a little, uh, like a Rolodex card type thing. Mm -hmm. So she opened it up, found a sticker that said all Japan pro wrestling, put it on my ID Mm -hmm. and I have a free membership for life in gold's gym in Japan. (laughs) They only do that for new Japan, all Japan and Noah. So like, it's a big deal over there, Mm -hmm. you know, but just Mm -hmm. because it's not on, you know, just because it's not the, the the Twitter market that the U S fans have making it and they're not touring here, you know, it's, it it doesn't mean that it's, it's not important, you know? So, and I always look at myself in a way that I'd like to, you know, if I went to New Japan tomorrow, I'm just feeding into a healthy system, mm-hmm. you know. But if I go there and, and make a difference and get over in a place, you know, that needs the help or, or is less known, if, you know, this time three years from now, all Japan has more exposure in the United States because they hired me, <laughs> plus, I did my job. Plus, it could be kind of, you know, like when we talked about, oh, you can get anything now. You know, it's yeah, just yeah, a matter yeah. of what do I want to watch to where – not having the same kind of exposure in the U S as new Japan. It's like that could, I don't, I don't want to say hurt new Japan, but it could flip. You know, yeah, it could yeah. almost be mm-hmm. like, Oh, mm-hmm. I'm hearing more about this all yeah, Japan, but yeah, I yeah, can't yeah. see it as much. And, and the way I, I look at it, it's, you know, right yeah. now I like it cause it's more or less like a, a purist pro wrestling. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't insult your intelligence. It's not nerdy little kids playing wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not hardcore death matches. It's not, you know, tricks. It's, you know, uh, you could take a main event, from Cork and Hall, you know, and put it in, in the mid South Coliseum in 85 and people would be into it. Or you could put it at the ECW arena in 96 and people would be into it, put it in the spectrum in 91. And, you know, it's, mm-hmm. it's pro wrestling and it's yeah. the way it's supposed to be in my opinion. And I'm happy as hell to be there. That's awesome. Hey, it's been awesome to, to talk these international travels with you. It was time of the show where uh, it's fine, time to find out what everybody learned from wrestling this week. Everybody in the chat, please chime in. Maybe you learned something from tonight. Oh, God. Because <laughs> I think yeah. it was like, the hell of an education. You should... Sam is an ass. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and that's a show title. I uh, learned a lot tonight. Ronnie, what did you learn from tonight? A lot, a lot from this guy. I literally just listened to everything you said. I yeah. took everything in, man. 
thank you for letting me sit here and listen. Cool, man. To yeah, <laughs> just use it. Apply. Yeah. What did you learn from this? A lot. When's uh, MT OSHA going to Japan? Probably never. <laughs> <laughs> Would I like to go to Japan once in my life? Yes. Yeah. It won't be to work a wrestling show, probably not, but just go to Japan nonetheless. Unless this fucking guy wants to take me with him. Yeah, exactly. You need somebody to carry your bags? Just get on the list. I, I'll carry your I bags. I gotta take bro. my mom first. I gotta take about six girls yeah. first. I gotta take my, my brother wants to go again. There's too many people. It's gonna be one of these like about 14 years from now. Yeah. You're gonna get a call. We're like, like, we're like, yeah. Ronnie, it's time. I, I want to be. You. I want to be like Bob Sapp. I don't know if you guys remember him, but he was a big, massive. Uh, uh, he was a MMA fighter. Yeah, he was with Switowski in the longest yard. Yeah, but he was like a pop culture god in Japan because mm-hmm. he came in over there as a kickboxer. But then he made all the right connections outside of the bubble. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And then he's in his mm-hmm. pop culture and he's doing music and movies and stuff. God, that's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to get myself over there and find myself. Man, some- you're gonna be like the next great Japanese karaoke star. <laughs> Why not? Why? <laughs> you can see me in one of those weird movies involving the. Fishies and bowls and never mind. <laughs> Sam, what'd you learn from wrestling this week? Last couple of weeks, whatever you want to go for that. What did I learn? What'd you learn in professional wrestling recently? Um, let me think. Let me. Think. Jerry Lawler told me last Sunday that the first match on a show is the most important match on a show, and I was yeah. always I was always under the impression like, yeah, it's one of them, and he no, no, Sam, it's the first, and I'm like, hell yeah, that's sticking with me forever now. Interesting. Gonna think about how you book that next WrestleRex, right? Well, I always, honestly, I've kind of been lucky to, yeah, to yeah. Uh, you know, I know the value that this is, you know, I always said the main, then the first, yeah, and he yeah. kind of just switched it on me. So I'm like, okay, cool, you're right. Mm. Not going to argue. Not going to argue to my hero. What about you, Rob? I, I wouldn't say so much learn, but <laughs> I don't know about, I'm, I'm kind of more excited about with, like we've got AEW coming up in Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. here in a few weeks mm-hmm. where i've been so burned out on you know i haven't watched much wwe all year you know but this feels like kind of a a, a, like a reboot like, like a reboot kind of thing where it's like oh i can get in on this at kind of the ground level yeah and get more of a you know it's You're like, not like me it was like man i really need to catch up on these nxt like, uk like like it's one thing even like with the performers that you're familiar with mm-hmm. it's still like okay how are they going to use them or how are yeah, they going to yeah. figure into the thing so it's I it's just just kind of interested in starting over <laughs> on that. And as far as learning, again, it's just not you know, it's it's just kinda of cool to hear about other, you know, oh, here's how it is like coming up in you know, like you said, your Japan experiences mm-hmm. or or, you know, Mexico and things like that, just from yeah. hearing from somebody you actually kinda of know. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and not just the same or you know, like, oh, or he's performed around here a lot and and not just hearing the same kind of talking heads talk about that yeah. kind of stuff. You know yeah. what I mean? Um, I learned that there is way too many knives in professional wrestling. You say knives? <laughs> knives. Oh. Um, yeah, you saw that one. And nobody there. has the balls to use them. Yeah. That's the worst part. Well, well people the, read books and think, oh, I'm going to tell you, I to- took the knife to the promoter when he said he wasn't going to PayPal me. Like, yeah, okay. <laughs> I've heard that a hundred times about some guy that's going to stab a promoter well, the in refer- any show. the referee <laughs> took the knife away from Lee Moriarty in that match. Oh. So that's not his fault. Okay, so it was part of oh. that. Okay, I got it. Oh, and I just remember the Angel Gate show, too. Available yeah. now on yeah. Indie Wrestling.us. That's yeah. right. Thank you. <laughs> Watch Lee Moriarty almost stab a guy. Yeah. <laughs> And, uh, and he's such a nice news. guy. He and watch and it's watch just the novelty of it. Yeah, really. and watch Charlie <laughs> Kroll uh, uh, chase down Matt Carlin's on camera until he's at the end of his cord and yeah. can't go anywhere. So I was yeah. laughing at that, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, from the chat room, Tina Keys learned that uh, what she's learned it's refreshing not to look at my cell phone during a wrestling show and sit back, cheer, and enjoy the show mm. as much as possible without having the need to capture every cool moment on social media. That's good. Because she, she posted some pictures from the New Japan show, and she said she was enjoying it so much. She's like, I didn't even want to get on my phone. I didn't want to miss anything. Plus, it's, so. as far as that, too, and I've learned, it's like, you know, especially if you're like up in the stands taking pictures and stuff, it's like mm-hmm. somebody's going to get a better picture than you. Yeah, you know? <laughs> so exactly. Like, so it's like, just Dude. get that picture. You know? I think that, that drives time, me nuts. When I'm at a concert and somebody's holding up their phone for like the entire show. They're all doing it. But yeah. that's what I, I was just going to say. I've done concert security for years yeah. and the people are all doing it and they're next to each other and they're like, button. And yeah. it's like, how many times do you watch those videos on your phone? Yeah, yeah. You, that, that yeah. From sound recordings coming off YouTube I, now. Mm-hmm. So why don't you just all agree, like, hey, mm-hmm. dude, or why don't you just say, dude, what's your what's your Instagram? I'll follow you if you send me that video. Yeah. Oh my god, they got a new follower. 
It's simple, you know? Yeah. And, and as somebody that's done that, it's like, uh, I'll look at other people's phones and go like, what the hell are you even looking at? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, like, it, it, like, well, how many yeah. times have we been filming a show and see all of them in the in the, in the the thing? Like, yeah. I, I, for a while, I was seeing people post parts of a match from the night and say, hey, and the good version's over here, <laughs> yeah. you know, for, for five ninety nine or something, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, it's like, hey, support this, you mm-hmm. know. And, and, but, 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 but when you but have, sometimes, like, But sometimes they get the better angles, too. <laughs> so. Well, and, and, and especially, again, like, having, like, worked in TV and movies and stuff, yeah, it's yeah. like, I'm always looking for myself. You, you know, it's like, oh, I made it into the scene or not. It's like, wouldn't you rather have have like somebody who was there professionally taking pictures you, you know you get a cool picture of the match and holy shit you're <laughs> it's like you're right there you can actually see yourself on camera I'm right there too, with a phone you know. in front of my face yeah, yeah instead of getting the reverse shot yeah. of guys backs and uh, <laughs> yeah um yeah all those guys on on uh you see on camera on on monday night raw are not getting good pictures of yeah. the action um, <laughs> they're getting so, the exact opposite picture exactly that you're, oh. that you're seeing um anyways uh let's see also uh jen carlin's learned that the carlin's are traveling in the, to another state this weekend is it for wrestling oh for a wrestling show it was no. two it was two items down so uh are you going to are you going to west virginia that's usually my uh, other state. They're going state to Chicago, I'm sure. They're going to out. Chicago. Oh, are you going all out? Holy shit. I'm going to guess that. Let's go with that. Tell right. hey, hey, Jen, I'm in Chicago Sunday for a uh, Warriors Wrestling, which is another big super show. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of Mexican dudes. So if you guys want to stay an extra day, come say hi. There you go. If anybody else is out in Chicago, go uh, say, say you, you, you saw him on the Mayhem show this year, this week. Um, And Bob fucking Sapp. That's it. That's all that. Can you make. guess who said that? That's uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, that sounds like Sam Panico. Well, actually, Wes. I don't think Sam's been in all night. And he was in Electra. Wes too. said if that. You've never seen the Electra movie. He was. Oh, was he? That, that he was, was Wes. Like, that was Wes. Okay. Yes, Bob. So, Sapp. No, I watched the Electra movie. It's terrible. And then I never want to oh, watch terrible. it again. You basically go, oh, that's Bob Sapp. You know, and he's just like goon number. Six. <laughs> that's what I want. I just yeah. want to be so famous for bad movies and yeah. bad things, you know. And to where like, it's like, oh, we just need a huge dude that looks I mean, like you. Have you <laughs> seen Batista's like, first movie? I haven't seen any of it, but and, I want. Uh, I want to be in like a goddamn Samsung commercial or something, you yeah. know, and just be like the face oh, yeah. of VCRs in 2019. Uh-huh. Yeah. They're it's obsolete. Like how, I don't care. I want so, to be the guy. So like American actors don't do like any like major major American actors don't do any commercials here, but they do a bunch in Japan and the UK. Oh yeah, there's it's insane. Like, like it's, it's nice. John Claude Van Damme was the uh, the the face of. Coors Light in the UK. <laughs> yeah. Like, wait, what? <laughs> what? And, and it, it, it's just insane. It, 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 yeah. That's the way the world works, though, God. man. All right. Well, hey, Sam Adonis, where can people find you online? Real Sam Adonis, Instagram, Twitter. That'd be cool. Um, it's official Sam Adonis on Facebook. Uh, yeah. Follow, like, dislike, whatever. Welcome questions about what he really thinks about wrestling. Yes. And uh, uh, starting, I go back to Japan September 13th uh, for the Odu tournament for All Japan Pro Wrestling. We'll be available for eight ninety nine dollars a month on the um, All Japan TV app. Nice. So uh, how many you can yen? That. You can is it, that's dollars? That's dollars? It's, it's 899 yen, which is $8.99. Okay. Yeah. So nice. it will be a thing. And uh, yeah, you can catch it, check all the action. And yeah. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the support from everybody, and uh, I hope I don't come off too bitter and mean because I don't. I love this. I think it's passion. I really it all do comes love from this. a place of love. Yes, you yes. Know, so, listen, I mean, we have gotten bitter. The, on the this thing show. that screwed up, boy, it's weird because you know, like especially independent wise, you know, I've been running around independent shows since I was about four or five years old. You mm-hmm. know, my dad was you know organizing a lot of these, and most of the top level, most respected guys in Pittsburgh. I've known since I was ten years old. Mm-hmm. You know, so like uh, I, I hate coming off as you know bitter, if you will. But uh, I feel like wrestling's mine. And, you know, I was around when it was good. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm somebody that has the ability to tell you how much better it can be. So shut up and listen. And I, I remember listen like Ronnie stuff. Starks. Oh. Where are you going to find Ronnie Starks? Uh, you can find me on the Twitter machine at Starks Wrestling. Uh, Instagram, the Ronnie Starks. And Ronnie Starks on uh, the Facebook. Rob? I don't really have. Well, I'm, I'm Rob Brown on Facebook. Good yeah. luck finding it. Uh, it's about the most generic name. But I was just gonna say something like like when when Sam was saying, "Oh, he's been around for that long." I remember you saying once, like, "Oh yeah, you'd be watching shows as a kid or something," and people would ask you what they think of you know, and then you wouldn't just say, "Oh, it's a good match," or you know, you'd give them criticism and they yeah. wouldn't like it. They, and they, it's they like, get well, angry about it. It's yep. like, well, they don't fucking ask me exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's how it's always been. And you yeah. Know, I'm, I'd like to think I've I've earned my keep because I, I continue to give back and, and do it more for the sake of wrestling. If I took care of myself like I should, I'd probably be the indie viral star and mm-hmm. be famous and all this shit. But I give I, I give back to wrestling and try to mm-hmm. take care of it and play by the rules and be a heel that doesn't get cheered. So, but 
That just gets you into trouble. <laughs> on that note. <laughs> on that note, thank you, everybody. Uh-huh. At Sorgatron on the Twitter. Check out everything WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Uh, no Indie Mayhem Show. This kind of, it was a hybrid tonight. So go over that. I might just post this over there, too. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Thank you, the chat room. We'll be back next Tuesday night, uh, regular time, 9 p.m. on Facebook. If you guys want to jump in with that. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. Wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.